back at Bishop Stadium, it is football time here tonight, and we're getting ready to kick it off. The Ashland Arrows coming in their road whites, black helmets, red numerals, Clyde, and they're all yellow, yellow helmets, white numerals. And I want to remind everybody that the 92 won the Wolf broadcast team. Our uh, food and our ability to stay hydrated and everything else is brought to you by Blue Collar Bistro. Blue Collar Bistro, the favorite place of the 92 on the Wolf broadcast team. They have the best, the best menu in the city of Clyde. Go see Blue Collar Josh and the boys, and they will take care of you because, trust me, they take good care of us. Blue Collar Bistro here in Clyde. All right, so Ashland will kick it off, Mike, and it will be Clyde back. And the Flyers, I believe, probably need to get off to a good start here tonight. Oh, they absolutely do. They're, I think what they're going to do is they're going to look and see what uh, Ashland's going to give them defensively and try to go from there. But uh, Jaden Cook is going to have to use his legs if he's going to get something done tonight. All right, there's an end over end. Kickoff fielded at the end zone. Bringing up the field at the 10, the 15, getting to the outside and getting just to about the 20, just a little shy, will be the up man. And who brought that up, Mike? And for a Clyde, that was Will Lozier. Yeah, that was Will. So it'll be Clyde at the 19 again. I'll call the offense. Mike Martin will call the defense. And Brad Bannister will be our eyes and ears right down on the sideline. You know, that was really good coverage by Ashland right there. It looked like there was a hole open for Will to be able to get up the field, and Ashland was able to close that down tight and, uh, you know, not even get him to the 20-yard line. Clyde's got two receivers out to the near side. That's Lozier and Cobble, two to the far side. Cook is a quarterback, stands at the 10. Got a man in motion going behind him. He's looking to throw. He's going to fake. He's rolling to the right. They're looking deep. He's taking his time. It's out there, and it's going to be cut. Oh, my, to the 22. And just waiting for it was Cobble a little bit behind him. The defender lost the ball because he was beat. And it was about a, what, about a 70-yard pass for the Flyers to start off this one. What a perfect shot that he just put on. Jonathan Metzger was in defense right there. And it, he would have been uh, probably better to uh, make it maybe trip Cobble and, uh, and instead of letting him catch that for that big game. So Clyde first and 10 at the 20. Here we go, up the middle. Daniels, head down, powers past the 15, down to the 12. Wow, nice job by Clyde right there as far as moving that linebacker. Demarion Dennison got carried for about five yards. Dennison is 6'1", 250 at the linebacker spot, and Daniels was able to carry him for a good five yards. So it's going to be second down and close. What, second and about three? Getting ready to call this one out. You can hear him down on the field right there through Brad Bannister's mic. Cook, flare pass, out to Olsen. He gets hit, he does not go anywhere. He's going to maybe pick up a half a yard, we'll say to the 11. It's going to be third down and short. A little flare pass, Mike, just took a little too long to develop. Yep, nice job by Metzger to be able to come up and make that play. As soon as he read it, he came up and uh, put the tackle on. Right, so we got Griffin Nuffs to one side, along with Brady Wilson. Near side is Olsen. Olsen with Daniels to Daniels, up the middle. Daniels gets through. He's at the five. He's down at the one. If we can, let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, he's about what? About a foot or two from the end zone. Yeah, he did a great job, John, of just putting his head down, bullying and carrying tacklers almost in the end zone. That was power football, Mike Martin, right yep. there. I tell you, Daniel's doing a nice job of just uh, making that contact, keeping those legs moving, getting the extra yards. All right, so Cook, first to go at the one. Handoff, Daniels gets hit, spins, touchdown clock. At the 948 mark, Daniels with his first score of the night, and it is the Flyers quickly up, and boy. They came out with a purpose here in this first drive. Yeah, big play right right off the get-go, that big 70-yard pass play right there. Brian House came up and hit Daniels at about the one-yard line. That was a solid contact, but Daniels just spun off that and put the ball in the end zone. All right, to attempt the extra point is McCoy Dickman. 
There's a snap. There's a hold. The kick is up. It's end over end, and it is good. We're going to take a timeout. You're in game scoreboard. Fremont Athletics Supply Scoreboard. It is Clyde 7, Ashland nothing. We'll be back after this on the BAS Sports Network. Hi, I'm Nick Cray, CEO of Fremont Federal Credit Union. We are proud to sponsor high school sports on Eagle 99, 92.1 The Wolf, and 100.9 Coast Country. Investing our communities and our youth are what we're all about. Whether it's for the community we live in or guiding people with the biggest financial decisions of their lives, we believe in people helping people. Investing in our communities and our youth is what we're all about. Visit us today at FremontFCU.com. Membership eligibility required, federally insured by the NCUA. ACJ over at Door Fremont are your installation and service experts, specializing in both residential and commercial garage doors and operators. Don't risk trying to do the repairs yourself, especially when it comes to broken springs. Let the professionals at ACJ take care of that for you. If you're looking to upgrade your garage door, ACJ offers a full line of doors from economy to premium to fit any budget with free estimates on installation. ACJ over at Door, serving Sandusky and surrounding counties. For more information, call 419-341-6586 or online at ACJ over at door.com. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. As we get back to action, here's the kickoff by Clyde. It will be fielded at the 10 to the 15, back to the center of the field to the 20, to the 25, and the up back is going to be knocked down, and bringing that back was Colton Johnson, and it will be first and 10, Ashland, and about there, they're going to spot them right about the 28, Mike. So decent field position to start their drive. Yeah, and a little bit better than what Clyde was. Um, they were inside their 20 when they started their drive, but it didn't take them long to get that ball down the field. So we'll see what Ash is going to try to give them a little bit of the same medicine. Landon McFrederick. Good Irish name, right? He's that quarterback. Next to him, it looks like he's got, uh, we'll pick up the running backs. I believe it's Brian Haas. And he's in, excuse me, Caden Spots is in motion. He just goes out to the left. There's going to be a counter hand of balls loose on the ground. It's going to be picked up by Clyde. And it was a muff. They tried to do the little counter play, Mike. And it just hit the back side of the running back. And it'll be first and 10, Clyde at the 18. Walker Britt right there, Johnny, on the spot. That ball bounced out. Walker Britt was there to jump on it. Boy, what a, what a big break for Clyde. And, you know, Ashland, they got to be reeling after that long pass play. First play from scrimmage, put the ball on the turf. Clyde gets it back inside the 20-yard line. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to see if Ashton thinks about putting a little pressure on Clyde right now. All right, so then the Fremont floor covering at the red zone. Handoff Daniels, powers for it, down to the 10. Boy, I tell you what, he looks solid right now, Mike. Coming right off right guard, heads straight back up the middle of the field. That's why I like the way he runs. Picks up seven, uh, second down and three. He'll make his cut, but he's going vertical. Here comes a man in motion. They're going to hand off, and there's going to be a penalty, and it's going to be a motion play against Clyde. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, you're watching these two teams battle it out early. What are you noticing at, at the line of scrimmage? First thing I see, uh, John, is that Clyde is having their way right now. They're creating a, enough of a seam for Daniels to just get through there and then do what he does well, which is bully people down and drag tacklers. And that, that penalty was actually against Ashland. They lined up in a neutral oh zone. Oh, my. So that's going to be a penalty for them. That's going to move the ball down to the five, so it was half the distance. So again, in the Fremont floor covering red zone, here come the Flyers. Jaden Cook at quarterback. Michael Daniels, the senior, next to him. And he's going to get it straight up the middle. He hits one, bounces off another touchdown, Clyde. So in the span... Of 46 seconds, Clyde with their second score. Yeah, Ashland kind of reeling right now a little bit. Parker Grisslinger from Ashland came up and put it again. Nice hit, but not not good enough to bring him down. Grisslinger is 5'6", 212, and Daniels is able to just bounce right off that and put the ball in the end zone. All right, on for the extra point, McCoy Dickman. There's a kick, it's up, and it is good. So your in-game scoreboard now is Clyde 14, Ashland nothing at the 9.02 mark. Mike, that's two touchdowns in about 46 seconds. So the Flyers found themselves up 14 and nothing. They half last week. Well, they're up 14 and nothing uh, with only, what, how many minutes left out of the game? Yeah. Yeah, just a few minutes into the game, so. Yeah, when, when and we, we saw this last week, though, too, John, when... Uh, 
Port Clinton, they came out their first play from scrimmage. They threw an interception for a touchdown, and that put Bellevue up 14 to nothing. So we'll see if Ashland has any uh, anything that they can come back with this. And one thing they're going to have to do, Ashland is definitely going to have to wrap up Daniels because they're coming up. They're putting good hits on him. They're hitting him. They're, they're not getting him down, though, so they're going to have to wrap him up because the hits are not getting him down. Daniels has got a unique style that he runs. He's a one-cut vertical runner, and he runs a little tall, but he's so solid, and his center of gravity is so low. If you don't hit him hard, you're not going to bring him down. And here comes the kickoff again. Second one, and that kickoff by Guzman. He kicks it down to the two. Here comes the return to the 10. Here to the near side, running right into defender. Again, getting dropped is Colton Johnson. This time, the line of scrimmage will be just about the, they're gonna put him at the 20. Okay, first and 10, Ashland at the 20. So, right now, uh, just unbelievable. So did you see that? We not only had a 60 yard pass, we had a fumble turned into a touchdown. Brought to you by Ice Centers of Northwest Ohio, C2020, with a customized eye care plan at Ice Centers of Northwest Ohio. So we've seen some drama already, Mike. Yeah, just in, in most of the drama is coming from the Clyde Flyers. All right, so Ashton's going to go with a one-back set. Forget the counter play right now. And here comes a man in motion. That's going to be Brian Host. They're looking to throw. They're going to look at this little seam pattern over here. It's going to be incomplete. Pass was a little under thrown. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, that time, he had the receiver he had some inside position on Wilson, but a little bit on his hip. Yeah, he did throw it a little bit behind him, but Wilson did a really nice job of trying to fight through the front of him and knock right. it down. You know, that's one thing. We weren't sure about Brady Wilson after going out last week, but looks like he uh, he's back in pretty good condition out there. Second down and 10. Five receivers set now for Ashland. McFrederick looking back. He's looking, looking. He's going to throw it out here, and the seam is going to be caught and dropped by two linebackers out in the middle. And I tell you what, nice pancake out there. Coach, who's the first one to hit him, Mike? Dylan Overmeyer came up and made a nice hit on that. And when, when you've got Dylan Overmeyer out there, a lot of experience. He saw that pass come and kept him way short of that first down. Back to a five receiver set. This time they're going to bring a man in motion. The fake handoff. That was kind of weird how they just did that. Running back came over and put his arms like he's getting the ball. Now he's just coming in to block right next to McFrederick. One to the far side, three to the near side. He's looking to flare it out here. It's going to be flared out. It's going to be caught. And he's going to get hit and dropped down right at the 16-yard line. Got to Brian Hose. And... And it will be a completion. It will be fourth down and about four. That was a good job by Britt Walker just staying home, not getting too far upfield, watching for that little screen pass, and was able to be right there to make the stop. So the Clyde defense with their first stand against Ashland. They stopped them. Back for Clyde will be Olsen and also William Lozer. A couple good special teamers there, Mike. Yeah, they a little bit of experience back there from the last couple of years. All right, so back to punt. There's a running kick. Oh, my gosh. He's going to kick it off the side. Of his look, foot. Out, look out, and cheerleader. And it's going to come to Clyde. Oh, my. And they're going to spot it. Boy, he's giving them a, a really good spot. That <laughs> ball probably should have been spotted about the 32. <laughs> and they're going to walk it back to the 30. Walk with me, my friend. Yeah, keep going. To the 35-yard line. So I wasn't too off. It was off the side of the foot. And Ashland just really stepping on themselves right now. Yeah, a little bit. I tell you what, was the uh, baton twirler down here had to look out on the track because that ball was coming right towards her head. she got good wheels. She's seen it and kind of hightailed out of there, mm -hmm. but Clyde's going to have it first and 10. Their first play of the game was a 61-yard pass play down the center of the field to get in the red zone. Now they're getting the ball back again, again in good field position at the Ashland 35. All right, so Clyde with two receivers to the far side, one in the near man in motion. They're going to give a straight up dance. He bounces to the outside. He's going to be at the 30. He gets hit hard, but he'll cross the 25 down to the 27. Uh, Pick nice, up of 12. Nice job by Daniels to be able to go up inside, take a little bit of a hit, and then bounce to the outside. And Kenya Smith had to come up from a defensive back spot to make that tackle. So we've got one man in the wing for Clyde. One receiver to the near side, and that's Andrew Cobble. Two to the far side. In at the tight end, Robbie Greenslade. Daniel straight behind Cook. Cook right now has got the offense rolling. Snap, looking, looking. He's going to give it to Daniels off the right side. He cuts up the middle. He gets to the 15, puts his head down, and he powers his way down to the 11. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Another 16-yard pickup 
Daniels is running with a man on a mission, Brad. Hey, yes, he is. And I'd say the one big difference I noticed, John, is he seems a little more patient this year compared to last year where he was pretty much straight ahead. He's picking right. and choosing when he wants to go upfield. I tell you what, he is straight ahead kind of guy. Nothing but positive. There's a quick hand of Daniels. He goes off the right side, gets by two, two of them off the right guard. And he's going to be dropped right about the sixth. He'll pick up another five. And right now in this drive, he's got about 30 yards, Mike. In it, three carries alone. Yeah, and this time, what he's doing, he's he's not getting hit and the bouncing off of him. He's actually picking holes now and right. getting through those. Second down. There's going to wing play, wing play down the middle. It's going to be in the end zone. Touchdown, Clyde. Who got that? I think it was Jaron Bolger. Did they drop him down? There you get in. No, he got in. Was that Bolger, Brad Bannister? Yes, it is. That's who they're slapping on the back of the helmet and on the back. Jaron Bolger for TD. So a little wing back draw or wing back sprint draw, Mike, right? Yeah, a little misdirection. Uh, bring everybody to the left and bring Bolger around to the right and uh, just block everybody down, which open that up, and Bolger is able to get it just across the goal line. So the extra point will be on its way. Boy, I tell you what, awful busy. McCoy Dickman. Played behind Sidney Holman last year. It's his turn now. Dickman kicks it up in between the arc, and he is good. So at the 6-18 mark, it's now Clyde 21, Ashland nothing. I know we talked about Clyde getting a quick start. Did we think it would happen like this? Not quite this quick. You know, Ashland has given Clyde two huge breaks, fumbling on their first play from possession, and then what was that probably about a 15-yard punch? Right. That uh, gave them great field position on their own end. So, you know, Ashland, Ashland has given Clyde quite a bit right now, and Clyde's taking advantage of it, and that's the thing. Clyde has definitely taken advantage of everything that Ashland's given him. Mike, that was a nine-yard punt by Ashland. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I tried You're to give him a nice. little. I was being real nice, wasn't I? Yeah, you were. <laughs> All right, so, again, <laughs> with that touchdown, another $100 donated to Fueling the Cure thanks to Sunrise Cooperative. Fueling the Cure is a campaign for food-based research at The Ohio State University for those afflicted with cancer. All about that. For more information, log on to fuelingthecure.org. And Clyde will be kicking it off again. Another kickoff. This is going to be a little shorter. This will be fielded on the run at the 15 to the 20. Come to the right side, get by one, and getting straight up the field and get some good field position to about the 34-yard line will be Ashland. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, you're seeing these guys line up. Ashland's got a pretty good size team, but what is the advantage that Clyde's interior linemen are having right now? Uh, the, the two things that stand out to me is their speed and their physicality. They're just beating Ashland up front in all phases of the game, John. And, and to be honest, Clyde's front is not that big. No, they're not huge at all. So it'll be first and ten. They're going to mark it right at the 30. So 30-yard line for Ashland. They've had the ball at the 28. And at the 20 and at the 30. Let's see what McFrederick wants to do. He's going to counter hand off in the middle. And they're going to get it on the ground. And boy, picking up about two and getting stopped at about the 32 and a half will be their up back. And I believe they're getting run a little bit of a counter, Mike. So yeah, we've, se we've seen that counter play many times, spots with the carry. Yeah, they're trying to bring people around, trying to pull the guard around to be able to get up inside. But Remington Norman is right there. He's held his ground and wasn't able to... Uh, you know, they weren't able to push him back. First one to wrap him up, and then Britt Walker was able to finish it off. So it'll be second down. We'll call it seven. Back to throw McFrederick. He's looking. He's being flushed out of the pocket. He's got a hit and sack. Oh, he took his eyes off, and there's a heat-sinking missile coming in. Who had that? That was Blue Norman. That's two oh, plays in a my. row. He was able to make the big play that time. That was a huge sack. Loss of 11. Blue Norman saw the look in the guy's eyes. He said, I got this. My goodness, what a big play. Third down and long. And so if Ashland hasn't had a rough start to the ball game, there's a lot of time left in this game. Boy, it has been hard rolling for them. Three receivers to the near side, two to the far side. McFrederick's now going to go ahead and shift it. And what are we going to have? We're going to have a flag. And what's it going to be? Illegal motion against Ashland. So there'll be another penalty by them. It's going to put them back even further, Mike. What did they do in that? So they came out in a spread formation and were getting ready to step back into a traditional wing formation. Yeah, what they did, they came back in, and, and when they came back in, the tailback moved forward. He took a okay. jump forward, and you can't, can't make that forward movement. 
All right, so that's going to put it back at 15. There's going to be a pass. McFrederick looking. He's in trouble. He's going to run. He's going to get hit. He's going to get sacked again. That was the one concern Clyde had was McFrederick. Can he break tackle him? Well, that time he gets dropped at the 15. So it'll be no gain. It won't be a sack. But it'll make it fourth down and a boatload. Fourth and 20. They're going to be forced to punt again. And with 4.35 to go in the first quarter, Clyde's going to get the ball back. Well, let's, let's hope that he can get a little bit better than a nine-yard punt this time. Woo! He's back at the one. There's the snap. It's a good snap. He's coming to the right side, and this time he does the nice high. It's going to be a wobbler. Fielded at the 50 by Clyde. Coming to the outside is Olsen. He spins around, and he'll get a little bit of positive yards. He'll spin and turn up to about the 46. Clyde will have a first and 10 moving right to left as you hear it here tonight. So, your in-game scoreboard... Brought to you by Fremont Athletic Supply. It is Clyde 21 and Ashland nothing with 4-11 to go. You know, at this point right now, we're going to see, you know, if Clyde puts another quick score on the board, you know, we're going to see what Ashland, uh, what kind of uh, moxie they had to be able to stay into this game. So we had a timeout on the field. Brad Bannister, down to you. Who called that timeout? Are you sure, uh, do you know? Uh, I'm not sure who called it. I'd almost think Ashland maybe would have had to call. They, they probably could use one right now to kind of slow things down and regroup here a little bit. So, Banny, last week, um, obviously, you were in the heat all night over in Port Clinton until late in the game. It kind of cooled off a little bit for you. How's it feel down the field? Pretty much a uh, repeat of last week? It, it might be a hair cooler uh, as that sun go has gone down. I don't think it's quite as steamy as it was up in Port Clinton uh, last weekend, but it's still pretty warm. So, Brad, you've been out in the field, and this is the, this is the first game played on this field, at least by the varsity. So what's it feel like to you? Compared to last year, it is so much more spongy and bouncy as they kind of re-put those rubber pellets down. It kind of brought a little life to this new carpet, and it's definitely, uh, like I said, a little springier, which should, I would think, give uh, some of these players a little extra, I don't know, a little extra acceleration, a little extra speed maybe. All right, thanks so much. One more thing, Brad. If you get a chance, I noticed that the one defensive end here, number 53 for Ashland, has a unique helmet on. And if you can get a beat on what that is, let me know. So Clyde's faking a reverse. Going down the middle field, wide open. And it's going to be Brady Wilson. Touchdown, Clyde. Oh, what a fake by Clyde. And Brady Wilson just waited for it and did what good receivers do, Mike. Just caught it in his hands and walked right in the end zone. Touchdown, Clyde. That, that was like taking candy from a baby right there. Those defensive backs had their eyes in the backfield. Oh. They were watching that little boot action that, that happened in the backfield. And as soon as Cook hit that ball and booted around to the right, Wilson was wide open. Those are ones that are hard to make because it's too wide open. Yeah, and, and he caught it right on the fingertips like a pro would. There's an offside by Ashland. It's going to be kick is going to be hit the crossbar, and they didn't call it. Looked like they had offsides there, but they didn't. So that extra point will be no good. So with that, our score now is Clyde 27, Ashland nothing at the 4:02 mark of this first quarter. So I guess some home cooking has gone the way of the Clyde Flyers, and just. Uh, that play right there remind me of kind of like that uh, fake bootleg that the Browns do, a lot of teams do, where they'll go ahead, and they didn't roll Cook out too much. No. The fake was executed so well because of Daniels running that once Wilson got past the defender at the line of scrimmage, I mean, there was no one no one there. No, and, and Cook did a, such a nice job of just waiting to be able to get there. And that's one thing that Clyde has taken advantage of. They, they don't have a lot of pressure on Cook right now. No. If they want to do, if Ashland wants to do anything, they got to do something. I'm thinking that they got to start putting people sending, because yeah. they're not sending any linebackers or anything. They're just sitting back, and they're getting killed. Yeah, they're going to have to pull in tight, which will then open the overtop. But the fact of the matter is, right now Clyde's able to really operate the offense with not a lot of threat. No. All right, so getting ready to kick it off again is going to be, who is that kicking off for Clyde number nine, Angel Guzman. Angel Guzman's kicked it pretty deep so far for Clyde. Here he goes. He kicks this one end over end, will be fielded at the 14, fumbled on the ground. It's going to be picked up, oh. still on the ground, and it's going to be picked up. I think Ashland got it, 
But boy, that thing was squibbing around. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, you're right, John. He got he hit him right in the chest, bounced off, and it was a scrum. But Ashland ended up coming away with that football. Yeah, Brian House was able to lay on the ball. Wow, what 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 else is going to go wrong for Ashland right now? Now we're, we're about ready to see. All right, four minutes to go in the first quarter of play. The other thing that is, you get a big lead. You got to stay focused. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure these coaches are telling them they don't want to run up a score or anything. This team is too good. This is a good football team. They just happen to be behind it and stepped on themselves a few times yeah. here in this first quarter. Trust me, they're going to score the football. So they got Johnson out to the far side. Here to the near side, they've got Sturry, and they're going to fake it. They're going to hand off up the middle, and the running back's going to pick up just a few. Again, that is Caden Spots, a 5'8 sophomore. His attempt, and he's going to pick up just two and get it to about the, just shy of the 25. They're going to say the 24. Pick up a three. A nice job of Robbie Greenslade to stay in home right there on the line of scrimmage and make that tackle. Bishop Stadium here in Clyde tonight. Glad to be with you. John Cullen, Mike Martin, Brad Bannister. McFrederick back to throw. He's looking. Throws it across the middle. It's going to be incomplete. That time, great timing pattern and great defense on the backside for Clyde. Who was that? On the, was that uh, Lozier on the backside? No, that was that was Abe Morrison. Abe Morrison coming up, wow. making that play. <laughs> Abe Morrison, right Good. on the money. Right on the money. He's a backup quarterback for Clyde and doing a nice job on defense right now. Morrison showing some athletic ability there. Now three receivers to the far side, two here to the near. McFrederick by himself. Now here comes Potts in motion. They're going to fake that. And they drew Green Slate off, and they're going to say he went across the line of scrimmage. That's one of the best offensive plays they've had tonight. Well, that's true. So that'll move it up to the 29. And John, you, John, you asked me to uh, check into that yes. helmet. That yes. is a new concussion protocol helmet, okay. something to help with the extra padding. It definitely looks a little different than we're yeah. typically used to seeing. Yeah, that's why it's kind of unique to see that. Well, thanks so much, Brad. All right, so now they're going to shift again out of the four wide. They're going to send one to the far side, go man-to-man -man coverage, try and draw Clyde up. Here comes the safety dropping back. Here comes a man in motion, a lot of motion by Ashland, which means they're going to run the football. No, he's looking down the middle, nothing there. He's going to run. He's got to get hit. Oh, welcome to Clyde defense. And he gets knocked down with no gain, and he'll be back to about the 29 again. And that'll make it fourth down. And, Micah, no one bit on that fake. No, Jordan Lee and Dylan Overmeyer were right there. They were playing a little bit of man under the two deep safeties. So that allowed the line and the linebackers to come up and make plays. And uh, Lee and Overmeyer right there to make that stop. Ashland going for it. Fourth down and four. And now it's going to be a quick pooch punt. Ooh. He kicks it short again. Everybody from Clyde getting out of the way. It does take an Ashland bounce. And will get stopped right at the Clyde 40-yard line. So with that punt, the Flyers are going to get the ball again at their own 40-yard line. We've got 224 to go here in this quarter. So I do want to make mention that uh, over the last offseason, I had a lot of friends tell me, you know my mom listens to you guys. Do you know this person listens to you guys? We have a lot of faithful listeners. Well, I tell you what, we do this game for you. Because to be honest, you know, anybody could do this. But we like doing it because we like telling you the story. Wish you could be here. Sorry that you can't. But glad you tune us in, and trust me, we love you, and we appreciate you being there for us. Uh, make sure you let our advertisers know that you care. All right, so Clyde's going to have it first and 10 at their own 40, moving right to left, 224 to go here. This has been like a whole half's worth of possessions, Mike, right now. Cook hands off to Daniels, right side, puts his head down, powers, gets across the 45, and he's down about the 48-yard line, another pickup of eight, and Daniels right now is running with reckless abandon. They cannot stop him if he takes the handoff off right side. No, they can't, and he's able to pick that hole, and then when they do come up with a good hit on him, he's bouncing right off it. Clyde, Clyde quickly to the line of scrimmage. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far. Just to the left of Jaden Cook is Daniels. At about the 47, 48. Taking the calls in. Now they're going to move Daniels to the right side. And Cook looking for it. He's going to give to Daniels up the middle. He gets the first down and more. Daniels spins, turns, and he gets hit and upended at the 41-yard line. Another huge pickup for Daniels. And right now, uh, we don't have the stats on him, but I mean, he's he's getting close to about an 89-yard game already here in the first quarter play. Yeah, I think he's probably equaled what he had last week, and he had 87 yards last week. I'm sure he's probably getting pretty close to that now in the first half. First to 10, client at the 41. Handoff. Daniels again up the middle. 
Oh, maybe they slid another running back in there on us. And they did. They got to Jay Plummer. So Plummer comes in and gives Daniels a break, and Plummer's going to run it now. So Plummer's going to pick up five. And what are we going to have here? Get it. Uh, it's going to be official's timeout for... A chin uh, strap that chin came strap. undone, okay. had to get back on. All right, so that rush down to the 35. So a pickup of almost six. Plummer with that. Again, two receivers to each side. Second down and five, 106 and counting. Clyde at the Ashland, 35 moving right to left. Plummer to the right side of Cook. Cook's looking. He hands off to Plummer, up the middle. He gets by one, gets by another. He keeps his feet moving, and Plummer gets the first down. Down to the 27-yard line, a pickup of almost nine, and the Clyde ground game is operating very well. Yeah, what they're doing, it, Ashland has three down linemen, and Clyde's linemen are able to take care of those guys pretty easily and get back up on the linebackers to give those extra yards. To the near side, we've got Cobble, and we've got Olsen. Olsen a little quiet. Let's see if they're going to get him the ball. Two receivers to the far side. Plummer still in the backfield. Here comes Cobble in motion. Cook looking. He's looking to throw. Throws it right out to Olsen. Olsen's going to give one. He's going to get hit. Will lunge forward, and he'll get the ball down. And will they spot him out of bounds or not? I just say he's clock still running. Down to the 18-yard line, a pickup of almost nine on that pass. It'll be second down and short, and I think they're going to let the quarter drain out, and they will. All right, so after the first quarter play, it is Clyde 27, and it is Ashland nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter of action. A 92 on the Wolf, part of the BAS Sports Network. Summer should be a blast. At Lottich & Sons Flooring America, they have the floor coverings that will handle your summer fun foot traffic. From carpet with stain protection to waterproof wood and vinyl, Lottich & Sons has beautiful low-maintenance flooring to help you enjoy summer too. Stop into Lottich & Sons Flooring America to get easy-to-maintain flooring made for your active life. Lottich & Sons Flooring America, where friends send friends. 702 Stone Street in Fremont. Miller Super Value and Clyde is the place to shop for great savings on groceries. Each week, hundreds of items are discounted to help you save even more. Check out their expanded meat department. For a great supper, shop Miller's extensive deli for fried chicken, wings, great salads, and side dishes. Taken big pizza and fresh daily sushi are now available. Miller Super Value, your hometown grocery, is proud of our Clyde Flyers. Go Flyers! Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf, W-O-H-F. And welcome back to Bishop Stadium. Again, John Cullen, Mike Martin, Brad Bannister. The Clyde Flyers up 27 to nothing. Quarter number two. Now the Flyers switch ends, and they're moving left to right. Daniels back into the ball game. After this, we'll give you some updated scores. So Jaden Cook running the offense to perfection. Looking for the snap. He's looking to throw. It's just going to be a quick out here to Greenslade, a little tackle. He gets through one, he plows through another. It's gonna be a touchdown, but we have a penalty. Let's go down to Brad Bannister, Brad. Yeah, they're gonna get a hold out here. It looks like on maybe Abe Morrison. Uh, Robbie Greenslade's a little slow getting up, but it looks like they're gonna mark him down if the play does stand. You know, Brad, I noticed uh, off one play earlier, he was kind of walking a little slow off the sideline, so he must be hurt just a little bit. This is a little more of a wrist injury, it okay. appears, he's holding. All right, so let's see what the penalty is. The Flyers on their first big miscue. And Looks like they're going to get a block in the back, John. All right, so that's a pretty major infraction there. Line of scrimmage was the 18. Now they're going to mark it from the spot of the foul, right, Mike? So it's going yes. to be back to the 31 with that penalty. And so it's going to be a second down. We'll call it eight. After this, we'll get you some updated scores. So Cook, two receivers to the far side, two to the near. Again, Daniels next to him. Clyde up 27 to nothing, but this is their first. Well, they've done pretty good on first down. Second down and long. We'll say second down and eight. Here comes Nuffs in motion. They hand off to Daniels. He gets hit, and this time it's going to be the shortest game of the night for him. He'll get across the 30, down to about the 29, pick up a two, and I'll make it third down. 
Yeah, that time Caden Briggs was able to come up and wrap him up low, kind of slid in from the left side to make that tackle, and uh, Daniels wasn't going anywhere when he wrapped his ankles up. All right, big play, third down, they'll call it six. They've got to get what, Mike, down to at least to the 18. Yep. All right, so looking at the sideline, calling in the play. Three receivers to the left. Just Aaron Wilson by himself. Now here comes Lozier to the near side. Cook is going to hand off. It's going to be down to Daniels, straight down the middle, and he's going to get it to about the 19-yard line maybe. Comes very close to the first down. It's going to be fourth down. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, how far away for the first down? We got fourth and a long one, John. All right, some updated scores. Sandusky 14 to nothing over Lorraine. Fremont Ross 20 to, 22 to nothing over Start. Rossford by one over Port Clinton. Columbian 20 to nothing over Southview. Genoa by seven over Oak Harbor. Here on 7 to 2 against Norwalk. And uh, we'll get you caught up on the rest as we go through. And let's see what Clyde wants to do. Looks like they want to call. Do they want to call a timeout? Yep. Looks like they're going to let that run down. And all right, so they're going to call a timeout. We'll take our second quarter timeout here. Twenty-seven and nothing. We got fourth and one coming after this on the BAS Sports Network. My job is to ask you about life insurance. Please don't make it my job to tell your family you didn't have any. At Wealthy Insurance Group, they're here to put your mind at ease with life insurance that will work with you for a policy that has your family's future covered. Life insurance is because you love them. Our family protecting yours. Wealthy Insurance Group, representing Erie Insurance. Call today, 419-334-4477. PT Services, your premier hometown therapy provider, is now open at 1800 West State Street in Fremont, Ohio. Their clinic offers physical, occupational, and speech therapies, along with specialized wellness programs that focus on the health and well-being of our community. They work hard to offer individualized care that helps you achieve your rehabilitation and wellness goals. Ask your doctor to send you to PT Services Rehabilitation, providing individualized care to give you excellence in motion. For more information, visit them at ptsrehab.com. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. Okay, fourth down and one. Clyde's got two receivers at the far side. We got two stacked on this near side. Bellevue up seven to nothing over Edison. Now here comes Brady Wilson to the far side in motion. Cook looking to throw, and what are we going to have? They're going to call a legal procedure against Clyde, yeah. and I believe that's going to be Griffin Nuffs. With the jump, Brad, is that correct? Hey, Brad, was that Griffin Nuffs jumping on that play? Number 16, I believe. Yes. Yep. Yes. All right, so now Clyde's got a fourth and what? Fourth and six. Ball spotted back at the 24. I don't know if they're going to go for a field goal here. It'd be pretty deep. Yeah. No, they're gonna. They're definitely gonna go for this in the air. And if uh, if Ashland can stop, they're gonna feel pretty positive about that. Cook back to throw. He's got time, and and he gets sacked. A little bit of a taunt right there. Uh, yeah. And I'm surprised they did not call penalty on that because the officials talked at the pregame. Right. Listen, guys, you make a good hit, you walk away, and there's a pretty solid uh, taunt right there by Ashland, but they get away with it and they hold Clyde. It's going to be Ashland's ball, and they're going to have it wherever they spot it. I think the officials are talking, but they'll spot it somewhere about the 32, Mike. So Clyde turns it over on downs. Yeah, that Demarion Dennison was, uh, you know, that was Ashland's biggest play of the game right there by making that sack and stopping Clyde on that fourth down. All right, so it's first and 10 for the Ashland Arrows. They find themselves down 27 to 10 with 10, 16 to go in the half, moving right to left. McFrederick back, looking, looking, looking. He's going to fake. He's got a great hit. Oh, he goes down. Oh, welcome to Clyde football. And he gets spanked down at the 18-yard line. So that's a little return favor, Mike Martin. A loss of what? Almost 14, at least 10. At least 10. All right, so second down, they're going to call it 18, 9.53 to go. And we want to also welcome all of our fans from Gross Point, Michigan, listening to the ball game tonight, kids. Don't forget, after the game, stay up because I'm going to come home and see you. <laughs> all right, so here we go. It's going to be 
on the far side. They're going to run it this way. Quarterback keeper McFrederick's just going to run it on the back side. Nice little bootleg by him. And they're going to spot him out at about the 26. So he's going to pick up a oh, good eight yards on that run. Get some of it back. It'll be third down at about 16. So Mike Martin. Um, Ashland struggling tonight. Trying to get some sustainable offense. Yeah, they, they haven't had much as far as getting up the middle or right there trying to get outside. Um, that time Logan Homer was able to run him down and get him out. So, you know, probably the best thing he can do is try to get that ball down the field. McFrederick looking, 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 looking. He's got time. He's getting flushed out of the pocket. He's going to spin. He's going to spin into trouble. He's going to look and throw. He's going to throw across the middle. He's going to be caught and knocked down. And it'll be a gain about seven, but it'll be fourth down and nine. They get the ball to about the 33. That's a good scramble by McFrederick. Yeah, that was a good scramble. He was able to get out and around that, and he was just able to get by Blue Norman, which was able to, uh, you know, make him throw that ball on the run. But Will Lozier came up, put a nice hit on, and not allow him to get any farther. So Ashland is going to punt again. They punted one, two, three, uh, four times already. Fumbled once. High snap. There's the punt. It is high hang time. And calling for the fair catch is Olsen, and he's going to catch it. Near collision, Clyde will have a first and 10 of the 26. So, Mike, um, you know, I would think that we could easily take up a uh, GoFundMe right now for the broadcast team because we're in the press box, and we're so thankful that they've given us our own booth here tonight. Absolutely. At Bishop Stadium. But it is hot in here. We kind of feel like we're in an air fryer. So we're going to start a GoFundMe so we can buy an air conditioner and have it installed in here. What do you think? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. You know, one thing that uh, that I'm very grateful of is having our own booth. Nobody's over here trying to get our blue-collar bistro. Oh, no. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't let that happen anyway. We got our BLT sub waiting for halftime. All right, so first to 10, Clyde at the 26th. Flare pad caught out here. Trying to get to the outside. Nice move by um, Lozier out here on the right side. He got by one defender, but not two. And he's going to advance it to about the 28. So it's just going to be a pickup of two, that pass play. Yeah, Caden Smith was able to come up and make that play. Nice job of just diving out there and getting the ankles. Quickly, Clyde with the ball. Handoff. Daniels. He goes off left tackle. Crosses the 30. Down to the 30. Uh, almost the 32, we'll say. Pickup of about four, so it'll be third down. And now that Ashland defense would love to get back-to-back -back stops. Let's see if they can. Clyde hands off again. Daniels, he gets hit, and he is not going to get the first down. So Clyde goes up-tempo. They cannot catch Ashland. It's going to be fourth down and one at the Clyde 35. They're going quick-tempo again. Here they go. Two receivers on the far side, two to the near side. Let's look if Jaden Cook might use his feet on this play. Here comes a man in motion. And almost getting almost off got sides. Him. Boy, they almost got the defender to jump off sides. He doesn't. Up under center. Cook's going to keep it himself. And Cook is going to fight, and he will get the first down, I believe. They might have to measure. Ooh, let's, let's, go down be to, close. let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad? John, I am, am not in position to see that call where I'm at. I lose reception when I get close to midfield, so I apologize for that. All right. And they are giving it to they him. Give him the first down at the 36 and a half. All right, thanks so much, Brad. We appreciate that. You know, you did pass the eye test when you got hired. <laughs> Evidently didn't hear me. <laughs> All right, here we go. First and 10, Clyde from the 37. 7 10 to go here in the first half of play, 27 to nothing. Clyde with the football, and we're going to have a penalty, and it's going to be on one of the linemen, Mike. It looked to me like uh, 66, I don't have his number in front of me, he went down to a knee and tried to get back up. That's and, Walker. And uh, therefore, they're going to call the penalty. They'll move it back to the 31 and a half again. Unfortunately, he just kind of lost his stance and went down, and uh, penalty drawn by that. All right, two receivers on the near side, one on the slot, one on the far side. Here comes a man in motion right now for Clyde. And that's Adam Cobble. They're going to go ahead and fake handoff. Here comes Cook. Throws it out. It's going to be caught. And we've got a penalty in the backfield, though. Things are getting a little sloppy now. Mm. 
and I'm sure you probably can't see that, Brad, from where you're at, but a penalty in the backfield, it's got to be a hold against Clyde, and it will be. So the Flyers shooting themselves with back-to-back -back penalties. That'll be 15 yards of penalties just in those two particular plays, Mike. Yeah, I was just about ready to say this has been a pretty clean game without a lot of penalties, but, uh, you know, it looks like Clyde is starting to uh, get a little bit lax out there, and that's going to happen when you're up 27 and nothing with 6.34 left to go in the first half. Well, we saw it last week. Bellevue went up 18 to nothing, and once um, Port Clinton found their mojo, oh, my, they went on a roll. So now Clyde's got first and 18, no, more than that, first and, tw and more than that, 20-plus. Handoff, Daniels gets to the outside. He gets spun around. Right now the defense of Ashland has made some adjustments, and now Daniels not getting what he was. He'll get across to the 20 spot him about the 22 yard line yeah luke brant was able to make that play what they're doing now they're starting to bring some linebackers up right. and start sending some linebackers what you said fill earlier. those holes yep now they would be primed for a slant play a little slant from the up man Lozier maybe here on the inside track one receiver to the far three to the near Jaden Cook back there. He's got second down and 25. What's well, a 25 yard play? He's rolling, steps up in the pocket, fakes by one, spins by another, takes off and runs. And Jaden Cook is going to slide. Oh my, he took a helmet hit too, right about the 30 yard line. He'll pick up eight on that scramble, Mike, but very close as he came down. His head got cracked. Yeah, Dakota Pitts, I think he was sliding on top of him a little bit, and that kind of did make head head contact. But the officials did not see it as being. Malicious, it so wasn't, it wasn't targeted. No, it was just incidental. All right, so third down, and we're looking at about 17 or 18. Now they finally get the board corrected. It is 18. Third down and 18. Clyde's not done anything down the center of the field for a while, and no delay draws or anything. We're gonna have a timeout. We'll take a wild card timeout. 5:08 to go in the half. Clyde up 27 to nothing. We'll be back after this on the BAS. Sports Network. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No college is called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Ohio did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to HighSchoolOfficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 The Wolf. 92-1 The Wolf. W-O-H-F. Welcome back to Bishop Stadium. 5.08 to go in the half. Clyde with the ball. Third down and 18 from the 30. So let's see what's going to happen. Cook back to throw. He's looking. He's got all sorts of time. He's rolling to his left. And he's going. Oh, to the, he's got big his face helmet mask. ripped off, and he keeps on running. Blow the he whistle! Up, and uh, he got his helmet, face mask ripped off, his head. He kept on playing and rolled over to this side, and that's ridiculous. What's Mike. yeah? Once once a player has his helmet taken off, the officials have got to blow the whistle, stop the play, because that could have been very devastating right there if somebody came up. And put a hit on Cook. Okay, so here, I want to do some little math for you. They didn't blow the whistle. Cook kept on running, and he ran out of bounds at the 40. Right. So they could throw the penalty on top of that. At the end of the run. At the end of the run and give them the first down. And right now, the officials are doing exactly that. Wow. And they're, they're trying to figure out, okay, this is where the play should have stopped, but it did not. But it didn't. And right now, Coach Carter would have every right to complain that. And now they're saying, uh-oh, we got this right here. And uh, we'll see. I think they're going to go from back at the 20 and mark the penalty off from there instead of where he ran to. But that was just dangerous. That was totally no. dangerous. I mean, they should automatically. Now, here's my next question. 
your helmet comes off, you got to sit. Right, he's got to sit. And he's the quarterback. And he's the quarterback. <laughs> so is and, he going to sit a, on this play? And that's a, you know, Abe Morrison will come in if that's what they're going to do. But that's exactly what happened, John. They took it from the spot of the foul, not the end of the run. The spot of the foul should have been dead right there when his right. helmet came off. So it's going to be third down and 11. That penalty moves it to the 35. Boy, Brad Bannister, have you seen anything like that before, Brad? No, I've never seen anything with a guy with a hel with no helmet just running free out there being tackled. I no, just, I've never seen it. And Co Coach Carter is saying, "Hey, we just lost two yards because of the penalty where we could have ran where he ran to and went out of bounds." Right. So they corrected the call to what was right, but Clyde lost. In but the, Clyde lost two in yards the in the. All right. Yeah. So Ashland's still in a position, and of course, here comes Abe Morrison. He's filling in at quarterback. Comes a man in motion. Looking for the snap. There it is. It's going to be handoff. Daniel's up the middle. Daniel puts his head down, and he'll get spinned across the 42. The 43 will pick up eight, and now that will make it fourth down and five. And we haven't seen Clyde punt yet, but I believe that's what they're going to do. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot of... Uh, well, Cook's in the ball game now. Clyde looking, maybe they want to try and draw him off sides. On your own 40-some yard line, Mike, up by 27. You don't give the other guys no, the ball no, on the side of the field. Clyde's pretty much got a punt here. They're going to try and, uh, and pull him off. they got 10 seconds. Going to quick now, kick Cook, it. Yeah, Cook is, and he kicks it. Oh, he kicks a floater. Let's see if it will stay inside. Oh, they get a Clyde bounce, and it's going to roll and get down at the 11. Nice punt by Jaden Cook. And they do punt it for the first time tonight. Ashland gets the ball at the 11. They've got 407. So, Mike, you're Ashland. You're down by four scores. They need some continuity here and move the chains. They really have not had hardly any first downs in the ball game. No, they have not. And they have tried up the middle, which is not happening. at Clyde defensive right. front is a little bit too stout. They have tried to go around the perimeter. Robbie Greenslade, who's on the sideline right now, but he's been doing a good job. Or he did a good job of not allowing that to happen. And if throwing the ball, well, they're just receivers that are not open. And there's a lot of pressure that's being put on by that Clyde defensive line. All right, Ashland's got it first and 10 at their own 11. Here comes a man in motion. They fake it. They're throwing the seam pattern back here, and it's going to be incomplete. And they're going to throw a penalty flag against Clyde, saying that the Clyde defender had a little touch with the one there. Jay Plummer is going to get called for interference so these kinds of things keep drives alive and it'll be first down for Ashland yeah Plummer was right there I mean he was stride for stride probably a little hand checking that uh, they were gonna call on that so you know I mean in, in the pro game and the college game that probably would be let go yeah that that definitely would be let go so it'll be a penalty first down for Ashland and right now, Coach Carter's kind of wondering, how did this all happen in the last three or four plays? But it will be Ashland's ball and Clyde's job to try and keep them from scoring. So there's going to be, what happened here? They didn't call, they didn't move the penalty off. Let's go down to Brad after this and yeah. find out what happened, Brad. It's still first down. They picked though. it up. Okay, look at, look at McFrederick throwing down the middle of the field. It's going to be caught, and it will be a first down. So a little prevent defense. Olsen does bring down the receiver, and that was Jonathan Metzger. But it will be a, the, one of the first fifth downs, if not the first, for Ashland. Yeah, he found that little seam right in front of Jaron Bolger, and Jaron Bolger tried to get up and make that, make the hit on the uh, the ball, but it was just a couple inches too short. 3.45 to go in the first half. That's our in-game time. And here we go. Back to throw, McFrederick throws it again, throws a nice little possession pass, and it is dropped. Clearly stops the clock. Second down and 10 at the 26. So Brad Bannister, did they just pick? Let's see if Brad's going to put his head on. Brad looked. Hey, Brad, uh, did you get a call on why that penalty was picked up? Brad, if you got me, did you get a call on that penalty? John, they called offensive pass interference. Oh. And Clyde declined the penalty, giving them, should have been second down back there. Right. Yeah, it Thanks should have so been second. Frederick's got to throw a little bubble screen over here. Caught. Dropped. 
at the 22-yard line for a loss. Boy, they read that pass play. So thanks so much, Brad. Brought to you by Frickers on the sideline, Brad Bannister. Yeah, that was Jerem Bolger that just came up and, and uh, put that stick on there. As soon as he caught the ball, Bolger was right there to make that stop. So third down, and we'll call it 13 from the 23-yard line, 257. Obviously, Clyde has, let's see, they've got one timeout left. Ashland has all three. Man in motion from the right all the way to left in motion, looking to throw, looking, 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 nothing there. He's in the pocket. He's going to take off and run. He goes to the outside looking for a block. He does get one, and he gets out of bounds, but he does not get the first down. He's going to get knocked out of bounds right about the 30-yard line, and it'll be fourth down. Yeah, Jay Plummer was right there to make sure that he didn't go upfield any farther and got out of bounds. So to be fourth down, and we'll call it a long six, Mike. You want to give Clyde the ball back on your own 30, or Abs do you want to punt the ball? You want to punt the ball here. Yeah, and there'll be a timeout by Ashton, so we'll keep it right here. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Brad, I know that you had said that even though Ashton looks a little bit bigger, Clyde's speed and agility on the defensive line and offensive lines have been a difference. Is it still that way? You know, it still is that way, John, but I am sensing a little bit of an adjustment by the Ashland coaching staff. It seems like they're committing themselves a little bit more to the run. Uh, of course, you factor in a little bit of Clyde making some mental mistakes, and I think it's kind of given them at least something positive here to finish this first half with Ashland uh, Arrows. All right, so don't, uh, don't go away. We will have our halftime show brought to you. That will be by the ONN Network. Of course, Mike will have all the official stats, and in the meantime, our half hour... Actually, we want a half hour. I wish it was a half hour, right? <laughs> our part, our halftime will be celebrated with a BLT sub by Blue Collar Bistro. So we're going to enjoy that up here in the booth. And we also need to find a way to get Brad Bannister's ears working a little bit better so he can get a little more mobile on the sideline. All right, it's going to be fourth down. They will punt. And it'll be Caden Olson at his own 40. Clyde's struggling right now. And I think they might have too many on the field. And there's going to be a high punt. I see no flags. Fair catch by Olson at the 36-yard line. Mike, I think Clyde just avoided a penalty. Right? They did. Yeah, they actually did because that ball was snapped and Clyde still had a player that was running off the field. And the official on this side obviously did not see that. Well, he didn't do quick math. No. No. <laughs> because yeah, as I'm adding them up, I'm going, I can tell you right now, there's more than 11 guys. Uh, yeah, the there's 12 out there. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Clyde's got two-minute drill, Mike. 2.34 to go. 27 to nothing. It's been a quiet second quarter. Yes, it, after that first uh, barrage of fireworks. I mean, Clyde scored three times with six minutes left in the first quarter and then four minutes, and so we have not had a score in the second quarter of play. All happened in the first quarter. Let's see what their offense does. Moving left to right, all yellow here tonight at Bishop Stadium. Cook back. He's looking, 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 looking. And a couple of those receivers kind of quit on their routes. Cook's still looking. Plenty of and time. he's going to throw it. He lobs it out here. It's going to be caught. Coming back for the ball is going to be Wilson, uh, isn't Wilson. it? Wilson. And Wilson fights his way down to the 28. And a late hit as we saw that. Let's go right down to Brad. Brad. So, Brad, was that late hit by Ashland coming in? Well, I can tell you Caden Smith's is the one that they're going to throw the penalty on. And he was kind of going down on a knee and did land right on top of Brady as, as he was down on the ground. And officials are definitely going to call that. All right, so we right now we've got a blown tire down on the sideline. Brad Bannister kind of struggling to hear us. We'll have to get that fixed at halftime. So right now it's going to be a penalty. That's going to advance the ball all the way down for Clyde to the what? Oh, they're going to take it inside to about the 14-yard line. My goodness. Clyde puts another score on the board right now. We're going to come out in the second half with the running clock. All right, so we'll see if the Flyers can get it in. Two-minute drive. They're going to hand it to Daniels. He goes off left tackle, puts his head down, gets down to the six. Now they're going to spot him at the seven, picks up seven. And the Flyers in a position, as you said, Mike, if they score here and stay up by 30, the second half is going to go quick. I'm going to be able to get home and see those grandkids a little bit. That's going to be pleasurable. Absolutely, but in the meantime, let's see what the Flyers do. Ashland's struggling here early against Clyde, but trust me, there's a lot of football left in this game. 
All right, so Jaden Cook, the quarterback, moving left to right in the all-yellow. Brand new field here at Bishop Stadium, brought to you by Joe and Sharon Wilson. Cook has it. Hands off to Daniels, up the middle. He goes to the right side. He gets hit hard at the five. Oh, my, it's going to be close to the first down. Yeah, that was a nice shot by Caden Smith to be able to come over from his right side and jump on the back of Daniels to be able to bring him down. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. How close is it, Brad? It's an exact yard, John. Thank you so much. Brad Bannister brought to you by Frickers out of Fremont. Clyde now with third down with one to go. And they get inside the five. It looks like the Flyers will have a first and goal with one minute to go. One minute. Cook. Handoff. It's going to be up the middle. Boy, I don't think he got it, Brad Bannister, did he? Oh, he lost a yard, John. Maybe two on this. So we're looking at fourth and three. Where's the ball spotted at? At about the, what, eight-yard, Brad? So Bolger got the carry. Let's see if Clyde wants to set up a field goal. Oh, it looks like they're going for it. All right, fourth down and three. 34 seconds to go. Boy, they're does have a timeout, and they're going to take it right now. We're going to keep yeah. it right here. John, they're pinching everybody on the inside. As soon as Daniels, whatever way Daniels is going, they're pinching right towards him. Like you alluded to a little bit earlier, just fake that to Daniels. Everybody's pinching down inside. Jaden Cook, he's got the speed. He can get around to that end, and that, that could be an easy six. He's fast enough. I mean, he's one of the faster players on the field. He's fast enough that he should be able to pick up the couple yards and maybe get that first down. Let's get Brad's opinion on that, Brad. Yeah, there's, there should be no problem with him getting around the end or even trying to take it up through the middle because he's got plenty of speed to do it. It's just a matter of giving him just enough of a seam uh, from his offensive line. All right, well, I tell you what, Clyde hasn't been shy. Of course, with the lead, they've gone for it on fourth down, turned it over once. They've got a position here. If they kick a field goal, they go up by 30. And we do have the running clock, and Ashton gets the ball to start the second half, Mike. But in the right. meantime, if they go for it and don't get it, well, then guess what? We're standing in an even situation here. So let's see what Coach Carter wants to do. Well, we've got He's number, got his offense out there. Well, we've got number 28 standing on the sideline right now. So. so Daniel's not in. It looks to me like they've got, if I'm not mistaken, they've got Dylan Overmeyer in the backfield. So Cook, he's got Dylan Overmeyer next to him. Here comes a man in motion from the right to left. Three receivers to the left side. He's looking that way. He's looking, looking. He's going to fake by Cook. He's going to he throw it in the end zone. It's going to be intercepted. And Cook had nowhere to go. Nope. And that blew up in the Clyde Flyers' face. Really interested about that play, Mike. Yeah, not too sure about that. I mean, we got when Daniels is in, that defense is pretty much coming right towards where he's getting the ball. That's what's been shutting him down and kind of leaving the, the other side open. So, you know, but Clyde thought they must have thought they saw something in the passing game, was able to get that ball in there. But, uh, you know, big play for Ashland here, getting, picking that off and keeping him out of the end zone. Three yards of run. You know, I would have faked to the far side and countered back to the inside, to the short side. Because those, all those backers are moving that way. They're everybody flooded in the zone. So Ashland with the ball with 21 seconds. I'm not sure what they're going to do here. They're just going to hand off up the middle and get hit for about a gain. And Walker Britt with the tackle at about the 22. And that probably will be halftime. And no, no, I don't know. Ashland is calling the timeout, John. I'm not sure exactly why back there deep in their own side. Well, they want to talk about it. Well, I, I mean, think about it. They're... The momentum that they have tonight is being able to stop Clyde in the second quarter. Well, and they have done and that. And they've done that consistently, right? Clyde's had some, it's been Clyde's penalties in the second quarter that have hurt them more than Ashland's defense, although Ashland's defense has done well. Yeah. So on this side, I mean, they want to find something positive going into halftime. Brad Bannister could be an interesting second half. Yeah, absolutely, because like you mentioned, I do think Ashland has a little bit, a little bit of momentum. Even though they haven't scored, they're trailing big. I mean, the coaches you know are selling that, hey, we're, if we just play like this and maybe play a little bit better in the second half, we can cut into this lead. And Clyde will have to, Mike, come up with some adjustments of their own offensively. Oh, yeah, and they will. They kind of lost that steam that they right. had, and that's normal. It's hard to come out and score four quick scores. So looking to throw, they're going to go deep. 
And it's going to be intercepted by Clyde. And Clyde's got the ball down at their own 49-yard line. Who had that interception for Clyde? It looks to me like it was... I, I think that Kate, was Olsen. Kate, Kate Olsen. Olsen, yes, it was Kate Olsen. Absolutely. Yeah, and he just got tripped up. And uh, with nine seconds left to go, we'll see, it. we'll see if Clyde wants to try to put one down the end zone. Well... Now, we know that Cook's got an arm that can get it there. We well, saw it. We saw it in the first play of the game. Well, he's going to go to Cobble or he's going to go to Wilson. Wilson really has shown pretty well here today. You can tell he's not 100% because of the hip injury from last week. But Cobble has shown that he's got lightning, and they're just going to take a knee. And they do. All right, it's going to be halftime here at Robert J. Bishop Stadium. Your halftime score is Clyde 27 and Ashland nothing. Stay tuned for our halftime show. Glad you're with us here tonight. You're listening to Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football on 92.1 The Wolf, part of the BAS Sports Network. Crown Battery, locally owned and operated, is pleased to support tonight's teams and takes this time to wish them luck for a successful season. The staff at Crown Battery recognizes the importance of teamwork both in and out of the classroom. That is why everyone at Crown Battery is a proud sponsor of not only tonight's broadcast, but a proud sponsor and contributor to our community, its athletic programs, and its educational infrastructure. Good luck and thank you from all the staff at Crown Battery, supplying new power since 1920. Planning ahead just makes sense. Let Hanneman and Chodzinski Keller Funeral Home help give you peace of mind. They understand and want you to know that by making arrangements in advance, they can help you create a celebration of a lifetime and spare your family unnecessary stress. Get started today with a free booklet filled with funeral planning information and ideas. Call or visit them at HanumanFH.com. Hanneman and Chodzinski Keller Funeral Home. They've expanded their family to better serve yours. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. From the Ohio News Network, this is the Ohio Education Association Tonight in High School Football. Named best sports program in the country by the National Association of State Radio Networks. Tonight in High School Football is presented by Bex Hybrids. Now here's your host, Skip Mossick. Good evening, everyone, and welcome into Tonight in High School Football's Halftime Reports here on the Ohio News Network. There have been some terrific offensive linemen throughout the history of Ohio. Ohio High School Sports. One of the greatest is our very own Jim Lachey, former Buckeye and Super Bowl champion from St. Henry, Ohio, who will visit with Big Jim next on the Ohio News Network. I'm Scott DeMauro, president of the Ohio Education Association. I'm proud to bring you tonight's game on behalf of OEA's 123,000 members. We teach in the public schools and state universities. We drive your kids to school, serve them lunch, and keep our schools clean and safe. We also coach the teams on the field. We're committed to making sure every student has the opportunity to experience the joy of learning and to succeed, regardless of where they live or their family's income. We believe in great public schools for all students. Farmers at heart. At Beck's, that's who we are. For over 100 years, the Beck family has lived and farmed in central Indiana. Today, we're proud to serve a dedicated community of farmers in Ohio. To us, helping farmers succeed means so much more than just being a great seed supplier. Our family of employees and dealers are committed to helping farmers seek new challenges, push boundaries, and innovate in an ever-changing industry. That's what makes Bex different. We love what we do. We are and will remain farmers at heart. Give your home the makeover it deserves at Fremont Floor Covering. Their knowledgeable staff can show you the many floor covering options available. Carpet, vinyl, waterproof flooring, laminate, hardwood, and ceramic tile. Fremont Floor Covering has over 150 carpet and vinyl remnants to choose from. Schedule for a quality professional installation or do it yourself. Quality floor covering at affordable prices since 1997. 12 months, same as cash available. Fremont Floor Covering, near the corner of North Front and State Street. Everyday values are at only one place, Frickers. Monday, boneless frickin' chicken wings. Tuesday, traditional frickin' chicken wings. Wednesday is steak day. Thursday, frickin' chicken chunks. Frickers, where kids 10 and under eat free every day from the kids menu. Also remember draft beer specials, everyday value, and kids eat free every day. The home for money-saving value is the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits, Frickers. 
Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. This is tonight in high school football on the Ohio News Network. Once again, here's Skip Mossick. Welcome back, everyone. Halftime of your game broadcast. We always love talking high school football with the great Jim Lachey. And, Jim, we've spoken many times in the past about your old stomping grounds and the great football that's played in West Central Ohio, really up and down the Indiana border. Why is football so consistently good in that part of the state? You know, Skip, it's really hard to put a finger on it, but it's just kind of a tradition. You know, that's what kids like to do in the fall, and that's what their parents did, and, you know, now the grandparents have done it. Uh, it's been good football for a long time, but, yeah, the MAC conference back there, which St. Henry, my high school, is a part of, has been, uh, you know, really outstanding throughout their history. Uh, I, I think overall they have, like, 134 state championships in all sports. Uh, football, they won two last year with Coldwater and Bremen both taking home the crown. So that was pretty cool to see in multiple years they've had it. So I think, again, you see that, you see other kids winning and, you know, there's a lot of kids that are related back there. Uh, you know, it's not unusual to have a cousin or two on on a team that you play against. So, you know, you, you kind of want to go against them and you want to play against them and you see them winning a state championship. Heck, I can do that. And, you know, you figure it out and you work hard and, and some good things happen. But, you know, most of all, they've had great coaches, you know, uh, you come to think of what Tim Goodwin has been able to do at Marion Local over the years. Uh, you know, he's got 134 career wins, just 34 losses throughout his career. He's been fantastic. Um, you know, I think of Chip Otten and what he's doing at Coldwater right now. He's been fantastic. Uh, you know, for a long time, St. Henry had Tim Beckman and won multiple state championships. Uh, right now, Brad Luthman is their head coach. So they got great coaches. Kids want to play. And, you know, that's kind of been the tradition of what you do in the fall. It's, uh, you know, that's kind of middle America, so to speak. And, you know, kids grew up with it and they want to do it. And they've seen, again, their brothers do it, their uncles do it, their fathers do it, and they want to continue to do it. And, you know, like you said, success breeds success. And they see a couple of state championships. They want to go to work and see if they can win one. You know, Jim, none of those schools are very large, generally, what, divisions four through seven. But with the expanded playoffs beginning this year, maybe are there now opportunities to play some larger schools who may have been hesitant to schedule them before? No, I, I think that is right. Uh, you know, with the expanded playoffs, there's going to be opportunities for, you know, those schools to play. But, you know, with that conference, uh, it's a pretty big conference. So they have, you know, eight or nine teams in it already. So it's pretty much a full schedule once you get into it and then you know certainly uh when you get into the playoffs uh you know expanded a lot of those teams you get a chance to maybe see again if you're in that same division yeah it kind of cold water has been the upper half you know they've been four and five st henry's been six and seven divisions depending on the year it, it has been good small school football yeah the, the classes aren't that big you know anywhere from you know 65 70 students to you know maybe 120 when you're talking about cold water so yeah it, it's just good small football guys like i said know everybody on the other teams you see them all summer long you compete a lot of them are three or four sport kids that play a lot of different things that, you know, see the same athletes throughout the year. So it, it is, but yeah, they're, they're well, uh, you know, well schooled once they get to that final four, they, they know that they've been battle tested because of the schedule that they had to go through the regular season. And then certainly into the playoffs. Jim need to ask you about the Buckeyes with the season beginning next week. You know, they're always going to be good, but I, I guess expectations with a new quarterback for Ohio state. Well, you know, skip expectations always for Ohio state or sky high and they should be heck they're coming off four straight big 10 championships that's something that's never been done in the history of the big 10 conference uh you know right now they're the, they're the number one dog when you talk about big 10 football and, and certainly that's paid off in recruiting they've done a fantastic job recruiting over the years and and now we're going to see one of those big time recruits cj stroud uh get the opportunity to lead ohio state's offense uh, and that's what you have to do because there is so much talent on the offensive line with the running backs, the wide receivers. Certainly, you look at the defensive line, the defensive backs. You don't need to be anything crazy. You just need to go out there and, and uh, you know take care of the football and make sure you get a win. Now, opening on the road is going to be tough. You know these guys haven't had fans in over a year, so that's going to be an interesting component for the Buckeyes. But they'll be ready to go for the opener. They got a lot of talent, and that talent 
We'll be excited to have some fans in the stands to watch him play. Former Buckeye All-American, NFL All-Pro, Super Bowl champion, the great Jim Lachey, the pride of St. Henry, Ohio. We always love talking football with you, Jim. No problem, Skip. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back on the Ohio News Network. Bex recognizes this week's player with heart, Grant Mastin from Jackson High School, for his commitment and passion on the field and within the farming community. And our community, it's really... It's really an awesome thing. We have an awesome community that supports us and whatever we need. Grant isn't just talking about game nights either. He started his own foundation two years ago, and the community has helped him donate hundreds of pairs of shoes. I started the Tackles for Tots. So the first year, I um, pledged a pair of shoes for every tackle, and I ended up with 120 tackles. And the 4.0 student still finds time to show horses and other livestock across the country. Definitely important in our lives, and it really, it's a great, it's a great portion of it, really. And it, it's kind of been a generational thing, too. Like, it's kind of a long line, but it's something that's really prominent in our family. At Bex, we are and will remain farmers at heart. Get in the game at Fremont Athletic Supply in downtown Fremont. What's your name? Ella Smith. And what grade are you in? I'll be a sophomore at the high school, Fremont Ross. And what sports do you play? Soccer, golf, basketball, and softball. What's your favorite sport? Soccer. And why? I've been playing it the longest and just the friendships I've built through the sport. And what do you love about playing all these different sports? They're all different, and I can build off of each one to make myself better for the next one. Get in the game at Fremont Athletic Supply in downtown Fremont. Summer should be a blast. At Lottich & Sons Flooring America, they have the floor coverings that will handle your summer fun foot traffic. From carpet with stain protection to waterproof wood and vinyl, Lottich & Sons has beautiful low-maintenance flooring to help you enjoy summer too. Stop into Lottich & Sons Flooring America to get easy-to-maintain flooring made for your active life. Lottich & Sons Flooring America, where friends send friends. 702 Stone Street in Fremont. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. This, this is O-N-N. All right, thanks once again to Jim Lachey for joining us at halftime tonight. Enjoy the second half of your ball game. I'm Skip Mossick on the Ohio News Network. This has been the Ohio Education Association tonight in high school football. Presented by Bex Hybrids from the Ohio News Network. Miller Super Value and Clyde is the place to shop for great savings on groceries. Each week, hundreds of items are discounted to help you save even more. Check out their expanded meat department. For a great supper, shop Miller's extensive deli for fried chicken, wings, great salads, and side dishes. Take and Big Pizza and Fresh Daily Sushi are now available. Miller Super Value, your hometown grocery, is proud of our Clyde Flyers. Go Flyers! Hi, this is Jen from Sunrise Cooperative. Since 2009, we have been a proud supporter of Fueling the Cure. The Fueling the Cure initiative is for research at The Ohio State University to help find experimental medicines and foods to benefit people afflicted with cancer. Without our customers, this initiative would not exist. And thanks to you, we have donated over $1.5 million. Every propane delivery is another dollar donated to the cause. Call us at 419-668-3955. Fueling the Cure with Sunrise Cooperative. Success great. Here. ACJ over at Door Fremont are your installation and service experts, specializing in both residential and commercial garage doors and operators. Don't risk trying to do the repairs yourself, especially when it comes to broken springs. Let the professionals at ACJ take care of that for you. If you're looking to upgrade your garage door, ACJ offers a full line of doors from economy to premium to fit any budget with free estimates on installation. ACJ over at Door, serving Sandusky and surrounding counties. For more information, call 419 341 6586 or online at acjoveraddoor.com. I'm here with Juan Vela from Fremont Athletic Supply, also girls basketball coach for Fremont Ross. Juan, what do you love about coaching? I love the relationship I have with the kids and their skill level when they come in and then watching the growth when they leave the program. They're just better people, better ball players. And you coach youth sports now too. What do you like about coaching the younger girls? It's, it's a different skill set, but it's again, I, I see the passion, the love that they're starting to get in the sport. Get in the game at Fremont Athletic Supply in downtown Fremont. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the 
92.1 The Wolf, WOHF. And welcome back to Bishop Stadium here tonight, our featured broadcast on the BAS Sports Network. It is Clyde 27, and it is Ashland nothing. Ashland will get the ball to start the second half of play. Some other scores tonight. Sandusky over Lorraine at halftime, 14 to nothing. Huron, 17 to nothing over Norwalk, Mike. That's a big score there. Genoa, 14 to nothing over Oak Harbor. Port Clinton over Rossford, 20 to 14. Fremont Ross over Toledo Start, 31 to nothing. Columbian over Southview, 56 to nothing at half. My goodness. That's a, that's a serious score right there. <laughs> My goodness. All right, let's see if we can get the rest of them. This, all of a sudden, this app went kind of goofy on me. And, well, we kind of lost it there. All right, so we'll get some other scores for you as we pick them up. Uh, in the first half of play, we're going to give you the scoring real quick. We'll take a timeout and get back here to Mike. Clyde, on the first drive, they went, let's see, one, two, three, four, five plays. And uh, about a minute and a half, a minute 15, Clyde went up seven to nothing. Daniels with a one-yard run, but that was a 61-yard pass play down the middle to Cobble that set that up. It was seven to nothing. Then Ashland on their first play of the game at their own 20, they fumbled. So like 10 seconds later, Ashland fumbles. Clyde gets the ball in the 18. They go three plays, and Daniels with a five-yard run. Extra points good. It's 14 to nothing in the span of less than a minute, about a half a minute. Ashland then went three and out and punted. Clyde got the ball at the 35 after a bad punt. And four plays later, Bulger went in for a six-yard run at the 6:18 mark of the first quarter. It was 21 to nothing. Clyde, Ashland got the ball, went four and out and punted. Clyde got it back, and Wilson on one play drive. They went 46 yards. Wilson wide open at the 4:02 mark of the first quarter. It was 27 to nothing as Clyde missed the extra point. The second quarter, Clyde turned it over and downs. Ashland punted. Clyde went about not nah, eight plays and punted. Ashland went six and punted. Clyde then was driving late. The ball game had a chance to go up and get that 30-point margin. They could not do it. Interception in the end zone by Ashland. Next play, Ashland throws an interception to Clyde to end the first half, and it gives us our score of 27 to nothing. So we'll take a timeout. We'll come back and get Mike Martin with our official statistics. Try to bring Brad, Brad Bannister into the broadcast and get things set up for this second half of play. Again, 27 to nothing. Clyde on top. We'll be back after this. A 92 won the Wolf part of the BAS Sports Network. Get in the game at Fremont Athletic Supply in downtown Fremont. All right, so what's your name? Jake Okeha. And what grade are you in? Fifth. And what sports do you play? Tennis and basketball. And what's your favorite? I both like them very well, so I don't have a favorite. What's your favorite about both sports then? Pressing four hands in tennis and basketball all around, basically. I love everything about basketball. Get in the game at Fremont Athletic Supply in downtown Fremont. Hi, I'm Nick Cray, CEO of Fremont Federal Credit Union. We're proud to sponsor high school sports on Eagle 99, 92-1 The Wolf, and 100.9 Coast Country. Investing in our communities and our youth are what we're all about. Stop into any of our convenient offices or visit us online at FremontFCU.com to check out the credit union difference. We offer local decision-making on loans, making the process fast and easy for our members. Visit us today at FremontFCU.com. Membership eligibility required, federally insured by NCUA. PT Services, your premier hometown therapy provider, is now open at 1800 West State Street in Fremont, Ohio, offering physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech pathology, and wellness programs that focus on the health and well-being of our community. Their staff is dedicated to providing expert care as they help you achieve your goals. Ask your doctor to send you to PT Services Rehabilitation, providing individualized care to give you excellence in motion. For more information, visit them at ptsrehab.com. Hello, it's Pete with Sunrise. But now you know that Sunrise Energy Division wants to be your first choice for propane. But it doesn't end there. We also offer a wide range of products and services like our bulk diesel fuel and gasoline, our oils and lubricants, just to name a few. Serving everyone from homeowners to commercial fleet operations, construction, and industrial. Our experts at Sunrise know how to deliver in a safe and timely manner to meet your needs. Sunrise Cooperative. Success grows here. We're making the impossible possible. Join Stand Up to Cancer for one night. Tune in Saturday, August 21st at 8, 7 central on ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC. 
Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. Well, welcome back to Bishop Stadium. John Cullen along with Mike Martin. We're talking about it. Mike and I are heading towards 15 years of working together. And I tell you, Mike, it never seems like it, does it? No, it's it's went pretty quick, John. It's been very quick, actually. And we've seen some spectacular high school football. And uh, happy to bring it to you along with Brad Bannister. He's the new guy on the team, but uh, he's actually doing pretty well. Like I said, the highest rated sideline reporter in North Central Ohio, Brad Bannister. So, Mike. How about some numbers? It should give us an idea at least how this first half was played. Huh? All right. These are brought to you by the Patenko brothers. who are over there getting the stats down for us right now. <laughs> um, first downs. Ashton has had one first down all night. Clyde has had 14 rushing yards. Ashton, negative 15 rushing yards. Clyde, 131 rushing yards. Net passing yards. Ashton has 25. Clyde has 157. So that, that gives uh, total net yards. Ashland has 10. Clyde has 288. So that tells a pretty big story right there. Penalties. Ashland has four penalties for 29. Clyde has six for 37. Time of possession. Ashland was 849. And Clyde with 1511. Individual stats. Rushing for Ashland. Landon McFrederick had six attempts. And he gained... Nine yards total. Caden Spots has three attempts, has seven yards. On the Clyde side, Michael Daniels, 18 attempts, 114 yards. Jaden Cook has four attempts for 10 yards. Jaden Plummer has two for 13. Passing, Landon McFrederick is five of nine with one interception for 25 yards. Jaden Cook is 7 of 8, one interception, which came right at the end where he threw that in the end zone. 157 yards and one touchdown. Pass receiving, Brian House for Ashland has two catches for six yards. Um, Caden Spots has one for negative three. Garrison Sturry has one for seven. On Clyde's side, Brady Wilson has two catches for 82 yards, one touchdown. Caden Olson has two for 10. Andrew Cobble has one for 61, very first play of the game. Will Lozier has one for two yards. Robbie Green Greenslade has one for two yards as well. All right, thanks so much, Mike. Then the final scores to give you up. Fremont Ross up 31 to nothing at a half over start. Columbian 56 to nothing over Southview, so those would be running clocks. Port Clinton up 27 to 14, Port Clinton. Playing some really good football. Western Reserve over Margareta, 21-3. St. Paul over St. Joe, 27-18 and a half. So the Crimson Streaks coming back, playing some pretty good football. Columbia, 44 to nothing over Vermilion. Uh, let's see what else we have here. I think that's pretty much what we've got so far here tonight. All right, so it will be the Ashland Arrows getting the ball, Mike, and they'll get the ball. To start the second half of play, you're Ashland, you're down by four scores. Uh, you kind of played even up with Clyde in that second quarter, whether it was Clyde's miscues or the fact that you stopped them a few times, but you're in a ball game and you've got a good chance to come back. This is a pretty important drive of the second half. Yeah, defensively, Ashland did a pretty nice job, like you said, the second half. Offensively, though, they they still did not get a whole lot going. One first down in the whole half. Yeah, and so, you know, they're going to have to figure something out. You know, they, they tried pretty much, you know, everything that uh, was at their disposal. They tried going up the middle. Not going to happen with that Clyde defensive front. They tried getting it outside. The secondary did a nice job of coming up and keeping things bottled up inside. And then when they tried to go deep or tried to throw the ball, that's when the Clyde defensive line just put way too much pressure on quarterback and wasn't able to get rid of the ball and, and the coverage downfield was tight as well so you know, I'm not sure what they're going to be able to figure out but uh, you know if they don't want Clyde to put a running score up there they're going to have to put some points on the board. Let's bring Brad Bannister into the conversation. Brad um, I am confident that being up 27 to nothing at the first quarter not scoring again that the Clyde team got a pretty solid I won't say lashing but uh, to be up 27 to nothing, it's, it's not a bad thing. 
No, I'm, it's absolutely. I'm sure they got a talking to at halftime. Oh yeah, it's absolutely uh, what what Coach uh, Ryan Carter did. He probably went in there, talked to him a little bit about, you know, we were up last week and we saw what happened. You know, we need to maintain our focus, our discipline, and, and see if we can stop shooting ourselves in the foot, so to speak, offensively, and try to get back uh, playing some uh, flyer football. All right, thanks so much, Brad. So hopefully, any better on your hearing back then? Are you kind of relegated to that part of the field? It seems to be a little better at this moment. Okay. So uh, we'll, right. we'll see what we got moving forward. So, Mike, uh, Clyde with the new field, and uh, I see they got the numbers on the helmets this year. What are your thoughts about that a new look? Oh, I, I, I like it. You know, they got the uh, the jet on the left side of the helmet. They got numbers on the right side of the helmet. And, you know, that, that actually kind of helps me out a little bit when I'm trying to get <laughs> who it is, and they're laying on the ground. I can't see the numbers on the jersey, but I can see the helmet. All right, so Clyde will kick off. Ashland will get the ball. They'll be moving right to left. Bray Braylon Hyder back. And also it looks to me like Jeremiah Rosario is back also. And here's Guzman. He'll kick it off. It's not going to be long. It'll be fielded and bounced and picked up at the 16 to the 20 to the right side, getting some ground and out to the side fighting for it and getting brought down at the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Ashland. Pretty good field position, Mike. So your Ashland, offensively, what do you want to change up? Well, you're going to have to get a little more protection for your quarterback. That's that's the number one thing. So you're going to have to uh, tighten up those splits a little bit and not allow that Clyde defensive line just to run free and get through with Walker Britt and Blue Norman just coming back and putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And on the Clyde defensive side, you stay what it is until you've got to make adjustments. Two receivers each side. Here comes a man in motion. Clyde defense adjusting. McFrederick's going to hand off the right side. Boy, they're going to get a nice little ground game. They haven't had much of that tonight. They go power off the right guard, and it's going to be a pickup of about six, all the way to about the 36, almost 37-yard line, pickup of almost seven. Yeah, they did a nice job of just getting that little crease, Dylan Obermeyer coming up from his linebacker spot to make that stop. There's not been too many second and fours. Ashton with one first down in the first half. Three receivers to the near side. Here comes a man in motion again. They're going to quick throw it out here. It's going to be caught and getting by a defender and getting down the sideline. Missed tackle for the Flyers out there on that flat. And I can't see who that was. I believe, I don't know, Brad, if you can pick that up. But on the sideline, the Clyde defender whiffed. And they get their second first down the ball game. And quickly they get to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and that's kind of what they got to do is just get that quick stuff. And uh, Brady Wilson did. Um, kind of whiff on that tackle here we go looking to throw down the middle of the field it's going to be caught and fumbled and it's going to be picked up by Olsen and they got called that incomplete no they're going to call that he was down I believe oh uh, no they're going to say Clyde Ball there it is okay so it was it was a fumble nice completion across the middle another turnover by Ashland and Clyde Gets the advantage. They'll get it first and 10 of their own 42. And that was with Ashland with a little momentum, Mike. Yeah, I tell you what, that was a big blue-collar bistro hit from <laughs> Wilson right there to knock that ball out and then Olsen be able to pick that ball up. All right, so Clyde's offense will get back on the field. So their defense bending a little bit on that series, but they pick up the fumble, and that was Olsen with the fumble. Clyde's got two receivers to each side, moving left to right. Daniels to the left of Jaden Cook. And here comes a man in motion this side. It's going to be Will Lozier. Handoff, and it's going to be Daniels. Head forward, picks up about five, gets across to the, about the 40, we'll say the 46-yard line. We'll say a pickup of a good four. Parker Grissinger was able to come up and make that stop. And again, they're just those linebackers are kind of sneaking up a little bit, trying to take those little seams away. As a pickup before, here comes Daniels again. He powers forward, and they stat, they stood him up at the 50-yard line. A pick, another pickup of four, so it's going to be third down and three. Well, nope, third down and two. Excuse me. They've got to get to well, if they get to the 48 of Ashland, they'll be fine. And quickly, the line of scrimmage. One receiver to the far side, two to the near, one in the slot quickly. They give this time to Plummer, and uh, excuse me, it looks like he's going to get the first down. Jared Bolger, excuse me, Bolger into the ball game, and he will quickly go off left tackle, and it should be, once they spot it, should be a Clyde first down. Yeah, it definitely is the first down. 
You know, Ashland right now, they're just kind of maintaining that line of scrimmage, allowing their right. linebackers to come up, but still getting pretty decent yardage on it. And we're going to have this, another procedure penalty by the Clyde offense. Clyde looking to do a little sprint pass out here to Wilson, who caught it. Daniels into the ball game. Bolger will sit down, but Clyde again with another penalty. A little loss of focus there, and that ball will go back to their own 47. Yeah, we're going to spot it. Yep, at the 47-yard line. Yeah, it's Clyde's seventh penalty of the game right now. So those are starting to add up, Mike. Those are drive killers. 18 seconds on the play clock, just underway. Clyde up 27 to nothing here. And that's your Fremont Athletic Supply in-game scoreboard. Back to throw. Cook throws it out here. It's going to be caught. Trying to spin back to the middle and getting about five, maybe six on that. We'll get back to... And they're going to get about five, and they're going to get it up to about the 40, well, but to the 47 on the other side, so they pick up the penalty losses. And quickly, they give to Daniels. He puts his head down, and he'll get across the 45, and they'll stop him at right about the 43, Mike, a pickup of about four. So it's going to be a long third down play for Clyde. Nine and a half to go here, up 27 to nothing. Yeah, the linebackers are getting a little bit more involved now. Caden Smith came up from linebacker spot to make that stop. Clyde quickly moving. Here comes Holmes. Excuse me. There's a pass. Wilson gets it at the 10. Spins and goes down. Excuse me, at the 20. Spins and goes down at the 12. And Wilson hauls it down. Clyde first and 10. And they are now in the Fremont floor covering red zone. Mike. Did you see that brought to you by Ice Centers, Northwest Ohio, C2020, with a customized eye plan at Ice Centers. Mike, that time, Wilson, again, wide open. Yeah, wide open, and that offensive line is doing a great job of protecting Cook. First and 10 at the 12. Handoff. Daniels, he gets hit and drops. He's going to get to the 10 and maybe pick up two, so the running game is stalling a little bit. You would think with the Flyers, maybe, Mike, we've not seen them test the perimeter of the Ashland defense yet. Yeah, because they're bringing their linebackers up tight and they're just kind of sending them right through to be able to take away those inside runs. Second down and will call it eight. Ball on the 10. They go ahead and give a counter play up the middle. It's gonna be what? Overmeyer gets it, I think. And he gets down to the three. Let's go down to Brad Bannister. Was that Overmeyer coming in on that play? Yes it, yes, it was. They're going to mark him a little bit short. He came on kind of an end around and picked up that ball after a fake to Daniels and just came up short here. So third to about one. All right. It's a ball spot of what, at the four? Uh, looks like they have it at about the uh, two and a half. Need to get okay. to the one and a half. Okay. And we've got a timeout. And we'll take a timeout here. Clyde getting ready to score. We'll be back right after this on 92-1, the Wolf. Taking care of each other is what community is all about. That's a priority at Hanneman Chudzinski Keller Funeral Home. For over a century, they've proudly served the Fremont community and surrounding area with personal, compassionate care. They're dedicated to helping families create personalized, meaningful final tributes to honor your loved one's life. For information, call or visit HanemanFH.com. Hanneman Chudzinski Keller Funeral Home. They've expanded their family to better serve yours. Wendy's Made to Crave menu is new and delicious. Introducing the Bourbon Bacon Cheeseburger. Our bourbon sauce is a sweet topping on an always fresh, never frozen, single, double, or triple. Looking for something spicy? Try the Jalapeno Popper Sandwich. A spicy chicken topped with jalapeno cream cheese, cheddar cheese, pepper jack cheese, and jalapeno. Still hungry? Fill up on a pretzel pub sandwich. Creamy pub cheese and bacon on a soft pretzel bun. This summer, the place to stop is Wendy's. You know when it's real. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. Welcome back. Clyde threatening the ball about the two and a half, as Brad Bannister said. They got to get just inside that. They got to be awfully close. Cook in there. Up under center. And this is going to be the quarterback keeping it. looks to me he's going to be very close, and he will get, what, down to about the one. Brad should be first and goal at the one. That's where they're marking him right now, John. All right, thank you so much. All right, so Clyde first and goal at the one. Yeah, that play, Cook just took the ball, and Daniels is right behind him, pushing him forward, making sure that he got that first down. 
All right. So the Flyers taking advantage of another problem turnover by Ashland with a threat here. First and goal at the one. Should see a heavy dose of just man against man. And they come in motion and they give the inside and it's going to be a touchdown. And who got that score, Brad Bannister? That was Jerem Bolger again on right. a little misdirection by the Clyde Flyers. So in the end zone, the Flyers score. Yeah, that was a nice job of just faking that ball to Daniels and then coming back and Bolger coming around, being able to pick up that touchdown and get it across the, the uh, goal line. You know, I love those I love those counter plays like that. Yeah, because the defense was obviously, they're looking at Daniels coming through. Him or the quarterback. Yep. Just enough for the Clyde offensive line. Let's see if they can convert the extra point. There's a snap, there's a hold, there's a kick, and it is automatic, and it's up and in. So the Flyers extend their lead, and your score now is going to be Clyde 34 and Ashland nothing. So we will have a running clock, and for those of you who are not familiar, the second half of high school games, if you have a 30-point margin or more, there will be no stoppages unless you call a timeout. Right, Mike? You call a timeout or a change of possession. A change of possession, correct. But if you're running, no out of bounds. If you go out of bounds, it's Incomplete not pass. Back. Incomplete, it's just yep. running. So things are going to move a little quick here. So with that touchdown, another $100 is going to be donated to Fueling the Cure thanks to Sunrise Cooperative. Fueling the Cure is a campaign for food-based research, research Excuse me, at The Ohio State University for those afflicted with cancer. For more information, log on to fuelingthecure.org, and I can't tell you how important that is. So the Flyers now with, uh, let's see, that's their fifth touchdown tonight, so $500 donated so far by Sunrise. Last week in our game, there's 14 touchdowns. Yeah. They donated $1,400 to Fueling the Cure. I've, I hope uh, Sunrise has had a good year, uh, you know, monetarily, because they're donating a lot of money this year so far. All right, with the kickoff, nice, end over end. They got to step back, gets it at the 8 to the 10, to the 15, to the right side to the 20, trying to turn the corner, gets stood up and dropped at about the 26. And back to you, Brad Bannister, I will tell you, if you are traveling around northwest or north central Ohio, there's not a field out there that doesn't look like there's a bountiful harvest coming this way. So uh, congratulations to them. I hope they have a spe spectacular year. But in this case, fueling the cure. Get involved. All right, so Ashland will have the ball starting first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. They're going to stay in the 27, so we'll go with that too. 27-yard line down 34 to nothing, 7.09, and before we know it, there'll be five minutes in this game. Quickly we'll move. They're going to have to throw the ball. McFrederick back. He fakes a hand up, throws a little pass out here. It's going to be caught and stopped, and he goes down right about the 31. So pick up a four. Again, that doesn't stop the clock. Obviously. No, no. Right now, Clyde's secondary. Just give, go ahead and give them those little ones, you know, just for a few yards. Little possession passing game so far. We've only seen them really might go deep maybe twice in the ball game so far. McFrederick, the quarterback, right to left, kicks his leg at about the 25. He's back to throw. Looking again. He's pressured. He's going to take off running, and he's going to get to the outside, and he will get a first down, and he runs out of bounds. But he just, well, I don't know. I don't know if Brad can see that. It looks like he's awful close to the first down. Yeah, I think they he thought he was a little further down uh -huh. past, the lightest, uh, past the first down marker. So they're going to spot it at the 38. That should be a first down. No, they're going to mark him short. Mark him short. All right, third down huh? and one. Yeah, I thought. I think, well, one, I official think was sig one official was signaling that he had a first down. Well, the official on the sideline is going to say no. Of course, it changed right there. They're going to hand off, go up the middle, and they will get the first down this time as they run a little counter. And the ball carried by that time, I believe that was Spots, and he's going to get it to the 40-yard line. So it will be a first down. I believe it's a third first down by Ashland um, here tonight other than a penalty by Clyde. 5.26 and counting. Ashland with the ball at their own 40, moving right to left. Glad you're here tonight with us at 92 on the Wolf. Again, John Cullen, Mike Martin, Brad Bannister here on the BAS Sports Network. Back to throw McFrederick. He's looking. It's going to be a little bubble screen. He's going to be hit and dropped for no gain. 
Nice defensive play out there by the Flyers, Mike. Yeah, that was a great job of just coming up and making sure that uh, he was not going to get any farther. That was Bolger out there making that stop. So the Clyde defensive backs are playing a little bit. I'm, I'm playing not, not to lose, but we do have to be aggressive right. in and space, right? One, once, once they see that ball thrown, they're coming up making good plays on the receivers. 444 and counting. Man in motion. They're going to fake the handoff. He's looking deep. It's going to be a low possession pass. It's going to be caught. We've got a flag in the middle of the field. And let's go down to Brad. Brad, if you can pick that up in the middle of the field, right or about the spot where somebody might be blocking a linebacker. Let's see what we have. And it's going to be against Ashton. Coach Carter pointing the other way. Ineligible downfield. Down I thought I saw a lineman, maybe the center, somewhere around the 46-yard line. So that penalty will move it back. And they'll march that one back. And they'll put it back to the 35-yard line. So not only that, that's actually a 20-yard penalty right there, John, right. because they gained 10 on it. Now they right. moved it back 10. So the biggest second down, and they're going to say about 15, it looks like, if they get the scoreboard correct. The clock's still moving. Two receivers to one side, three to the near side. They've got to try and go deep at least once here. He's looking. He's got time. He's in the backfield. He's going to throw it away. No, it's going to be caught and dropped right there at the sideline. Brady Wilson coming up and making the tackle. And it'll be for no gain. Still maybe one yard. We'll say a pass play to the 36. So they got one yard. Bulger, excuse me, on the coverage. Yeah, and that's, that's again, you know, they're letting them catch it right there for a very short gain. Doesn't matter if they go out of bounds or not because the clock's going to continue to run. 34 to nothing, Clyde with the lead. We'll try to get you some updated scores here in a minute. Week number two, high school season. Both these teams looking for week number one win. There, he's gonna be flushed out of the pocket. He's rolling, rolling, he's in trouble, and he's gonna get hit and knocked out of bounds. Nice pursuit by Overmeyer, and it gets him out of bounds for what, Mike, no gain. Yeah, no gain at all, and that's a good job of you know, just stringing that out. He thought he was going to be able to break and chain. Dylan Overmeyer showed that he's got a little bit of speed out there to be able yes, to run him did. down, be able to chase him all the way down, get him out of bounds to the side. Bellevue 21 to 6 over Edison. Sandusky 21 to nothing over Lorraine. Port Clinton up by 13, 27 14. Genoa up 14 to nothing. Ross still 31 to nothing. Here on 17 nothing over Norwalk. There's the punt, and boy, Olsen has had to catch it in the middle of traffic, Mike. And, and I'm looking at those fair catches. Don't you think that defense is getting pretty close here? <laughs> yeah, that, that time, number 21 was right there. Jonathan Metzger was, like, right in his face. But the officials didn't see that uh, he was too close, so I let the play go on. So Brad Bannister on the sideline for us. Brad, the condition, the working conditions for you have dramatically improved since the game started. Oh, absolutely. There's, it's a complete different feel down here. It's still a little bit muggy, but we got a little bit of a breeze, and the temperature's dropped a little bit. It's actually kind of a nice night to be out here. Brad on the sidelines, brought to you by Frickers in Fremont. Clyde with two receivers to each side. 2.29 to go here. Jaden Cook with the ball, hands off. Boy, getting hit once and keeping his feet moving and still going is the up running back. And we're still with the ball. And getting a first down off the left side, picking up about 16 for Clyde in the ball game. Chauncey Miracle, a sophomore, and, excuse me, Chancey Miracle. I tell you what, he was a bowling ball going Oh, there. Chance Miracle, I tell you, he looked good right there. He just ran through a couple of big defenders. He ran through number 60, Parker Gersinger was, 5'6", 212 pounds. He ran right through him. Just kept the feet moving. Pickup of 17. Chance Miracle. And Miracle. He's looking. Cook's going to throw it out here. It's going to be incomplete. Tried to get it outside to the left side. And then, yeah, maybe Griffin Nuss took a peek upfield, Mike, because there was a little bit of traffic out there. That won't stop the clock again. It's going to be second down and 10 at the 48. Yeah, Chance Miracle out there looking a little bit like his dad when he played for when I was coaching, yes. Jeremy Miracle. All right. Well, let's see if Chance can. A couple years ago. A couple. Well, let's not add them up. It's been a little bit more than a couple, Mike. Yeah, you're right. All right. 
All right, so Clyde, second and ten. One minute. I told you it was going to move quick. We're down to one minute in the third quarter already. Man in motion from the left to the right, getting set. And there's a handoff to Miracle again in the middle. He gets hit, and he bounces, but he'll get maybe a yard. No, we'll say two to the 46-yard line. It'll make it third down and long. And the Flyers will have a third and long with 45 seconds to go here in this quarter. They will have to run the play before the quarter ends. Let's see what they want to do. Miracle in the ball game. Jaden Cook at quarterback. Gives the Miracle again. He gets by one. Gets stood up at the line of scrimmage. And he might get one yard and that's going to be it. So they will, Clyde Flyers are going to have to punt the football here tonight. They haven't done that. And with 15 seconds to go, they're just going to let the quarter run out. We'll take a quarter break at three. In the books, it's Clyde 34, Ashland nothing. We'll be back with a fourth quarter of action after this timeout on the BAS Radio Network. Everyday values are at only one place, Frickers. Monday, boneless frickin' chicken wings. Tuesday, traditional frickin' chicken wings. Wednesday is steak day. Thursday, frickin' chicken chunks. Frickers, where kids 10 and under eat free every day from the kids' menu. Also remember draft beer specials, everyday value, and kids eat free every day. The home for money-saving value is the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits, Frickers. Get the ultimate in carpet performance that is pet and kid friendly with carpeting from Fremont Floor Covering. See the new styles that are made of sure soft nylon with built-in microband technology and a lifetime pet and soil resistant warranty. This carpeting is also backed by a 100-day consumer satisfaction warranty. See store for details. For easy maintenance carpet, get to Fremont Floor Covering near the corner of North Front and State Street in Fremont. Good luck for a winning season. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, back to action. We're in the fourth quarter play. How did we get here? My goodness. Week number two here in Clyde at Bishop Stadium. So the Flyers with big third down play. It's not even 9 o'clock at night, fellas. All right. 12 minutes to go in this one. There goes a man in motion. Jaden Cook, obviously, at still a quarterback. Schwoko in from the slot. And it's going to be a quick pooch punt. It was fourth and short. And it's going to be a nice Clyde bounce. And it is going to get bounced down all the way to the half yard mark. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you, Brad Bannister. Jake Cooks had the foot tonight. Well, before Brad comes on, I'm going to tell you his first punt was 47 yards. And that one, you know, that's from the 45. And it's at the half yard line. Right. So yeah, he's averaging forty six yards. You can make a, a lot of you can make him a lot of money in this game if you can do that. Oh yeah. So Brad Bannister on the sideline. I tell you this could be a really critical point of the game. Not because of Clyde's lead, but for Ashland. They're in their own end zone basically setting up the offense. McFrederick. He's gotta be careful. And they're going to go ahead and hand it off and tell you what, a little bit of hit. And they're going to get hit at the one. And they'll power over the right guard to about the four. So they pick up about three on that one. Nice little power play, Mike. They had to run the ball. Oh, yeah, Could definitely. take a chance of a safety and have to give up two points and then kick the ball back to Clyde. 11 minutes and counting. So, again, second down and seven, left to right. The Ashland Arrows lost last week in a close one. Find themselves down big to Clyde here tonight. McFrederick's is going to hand off again. Same play. He's going to get the running back is going to get hit and drop for a loss back to the two. That time they handed the ball off to Ash Ashton Moffat, 5'9 senior. And he went in reverse. Loss of two back to the two. Mason, Mason Ash was in on that stop. Third down and eight. 10.30 to go in the ball game. Man in motion left to right. He stops, fakes it, and they're going to call Clyde for an encroachment as a Clyde right side defensive end jumped on that fake. And, and Mike, you know the kids are anxious. 
Oh yeah, they, they thought that ball was coming right there. He was going to get a little bit of a uh, little advantage, which uh, well, it's going to help them out. It's going to be third and short now. The ball will be spotted at about the eight. I can see Coach Carter going, why is this happening <laughs> again? <laughs> so McFrederick back to throw. He's looking. He's looking down deep. He's going to run for it. He's going to get by, by hit by one, but he's going to get. Now he's going to get short. And that time, coming up and making that play off the left side, Mike, who was that? Kate Carroll. What? Kate Carroll did a nice job of coming up and making that stick and not allowing. Oh, they did give him first down. Boy. Yeah, yeah that was uh, kind of close. Yes, absolutely. Brad Bannister, obviously not with us tonight because he's having trouble hearing. First and 10 at the about 12-yard line. 9.22 in this one to go. McFrederick back. He's flaring a guy out to the left. That's Potts. And looking to throw, looking to throw. He's going to throw it deep. He's got a seam pattern. It's going to be incomplete. Boy, great coverage out there. And by Clyde, Mike, I tell you what, a couple guys out there getting some playing time, playing pretty well. Yeah, Kyle Flewelling, the nice job. He just stands stride for stride right there. Had his hands up. And uh, nowhere for that ball to go. That was great defense. Yeah, it definitely was. So Clyde with some supportive personnel in there right now. Correct. Flew Elling in there. And we'll pick up a few more of them in there also. Again, Kate Carroll in there. We talked about him. Man in motion for Ashland. McFrederick's going to hand off to the left side, trying to bounce the outside. Boy getting hit, and no gain on that side. Again, was their running back, Caden Spots, and it has been a tough night for him. Pickup of one, third down and nine. That was Austin Carter making the stop. Guys, this is an Ashland team, too, that put 27 points up last week. So for Clyde to hold them to nothing with eight to go is pretty impressive. Eight minutes to go in the ball game. Clyde up 34 to nothing. Clyde came out hot. Ashland kind of stumbled a little bit. Clyde took advantage. Here we go. Flooding the left side. McFrederick's going to run again. He's going to try. And he's a little shifty guy, but he'll get by two, by three, spin by another one. He's running back to the other side, but this time nowhere to go. He ran about 15 yards horizontally to get dropped at the 15, and that'll make it fourth down. Chance Miracle ran him down from right. behind. Was able to get him down. So Chance. Offense and defense making some big plays. Well, I'll tell you what, put me in the game, coach. There right? you go. How are you going to build a program? You can't play everybody all the time. And right now, Clyde with the big lead is a perfect opportunity, especially knowing the team's going to be throwing the whole kitchen sink at you. They're going to have to punt the football, and it's a nice punt. It's going to float. It's going to be caught and fielded. Fair catch by Olsen, and Clyde will have it first and 10 at their own 47. So I'm believing we're going to see a bunch of keep it on the grounds here tonight. Look and try and run this clock. Might be where we're going to see a little bit of Abe Morrison come in and at uh, under the center. Well, we want to remind everybody next week our schedule. Let's see where we let's see where we are at next week. Next week we are. At Bellevue, as Shelby comes on to take on the Bellevue Redmen next week. And so, that'll be our lineup. We'll go see our friends over at the Athletic Complex. Hand off the right side for Clyde. New running back into the ball game is going to pick up about a yard, maybe two, and that is, again, Chance Miracle off the right side. Let that clock run. Big key right now, Mike Martin picks up three, is let's get out of here without any injuries. Right, right. And they, uh, you know, subbing quite a few players in there right now. Ashland has not subbed too many of their defensive players yet. They've got a few that uh, they moved around, but, you know, they still pretty much have their first team in. Clyde plays against Norway next week, and we'll talk a little bit about them. Looking for the snap. There's a the snap. There's a the handoff. Off the left side. Boy, Miracle breaks a nice big run. He gets very near the first down. Tell you what, he makes that first move. 
He's got a little giddy up in his step, Mike Martin. Yeah, he can make that cut and just cut, just move it right upfield, keep the feet moving. He gets the first down. And that, again, Parker Grissinger was the one that uh, pulled him down. So, Brad Bannister, do you have us? Yes, I do right now. I do. I'm good. All right, so who's the quarterback for Clyde right now? Yeah, I don't know who that is, John. It looks like number 13. 13. <laughs> Just throwing it at you. Yeah, drink, you're coming drink. at me uh, here hot. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. I'm no, that's in. okay. I'm coming that's, in hot. That's Dr okay. Drake Goon. Snap. Goon. Miracle. He gets hit. We're going to have a penalty right here on this sideline. And let's see what they call. Drake Goon sneaks in there. They are getting the sophomore a few reps. Not a bad idea. No, not at all. Doesn't mean he gets out of uh, the JV game tomorrow. It just means he got a few plays on him tonight. I'll tell you the one thing, guys. Uh, Chancey Miracle, the running back for Clyde, his name was uh, very uh, prominent in middle school football. He scored a lot of touchdowns for the Clyde Flyers in their younger uh, younger levels. Well, he's a sophomore. He's 5'8", 171, and he looks like he's built like a little bit like a quick fire hydrant. Low to center to gravity, and, and to be honest, in the pros, we're seeing that typical kind of running back, Mike, the guy that's pretty solid, can run about a 4-5, 4-4, 5-8, 5-9, four, five, four, four, five, five, about two bills. And a miracle with that penalty, it's against Clyde. It's going to move the ball back to the 48-yard line. You know, it's, it's great that he's getting the experience right now. And Ashland, like I said, still, they got their first teamers in, so he's doing this against uh, Ashland number one team. 4.43 and counting. Clyde in full command. So Goon at quarterback. Snaps his hand. Hands off. Here comes Miracle. He gets a block. Cuts up the middle. Gets by another one. Spins and turns. Runs into his own players. His own player was coming back from the backside to block for him. And he spun forward. He picks up. Oh, some pretty good yardage. He gets all the way to the 40, Mike. So he picked up uh, 10, about 12 on that. Yeah, I'm not sure who to give the tackle to on that since uh, you know, he pretty much got hit by his own player hey, and uh, spun backwards a little bit. Hey, what's up, homie? <laughs> his old teammate got up a little slow. He yeah. did. Yeah. Tried getting a player in here very late, and that's Justin Clark, a sophomore. They just threw him on the field. So Goon at quarterback, he's got a new player next to him. He snaps, high snap, gives it number 29 in the ball game. We'll find out who it is in a second off right tackle. He fights away for, oh, he picks up a yard or two. It's Clark Norman. All right, so another Norman on the field. Then moves the ball to the 39. Pick up of one, third down. Of course, nobody expecting a pass here by Goon. Drake Goon, 5'8", 162 pound sophomore handoff. In the middle. Nice hard run. Nearly getting the first down up to about the 30, we'll say the 33, Mike. A pickup of six on that run. Yeah, they, they have a nice stable of young running backs right there. Another freshman in there, wide receiver, Braden Olson. So Clyde's got that second, maybe second and a half unit in there right now, Mike, with uh, and moving the football. They got fourth and short. These guys are going to be playing tomorrow morning. Let's see if they can get this fourth and short. They're packing it in. Here come the linebackers. It's got nine seconds to go. And we're going to have what? A legal procedure against huh. Clyde. Boy, Brad, I don't know if I saw that or not. It looked to me like maybe one of the linemen flinched. Or, or we've got somebody that's lined up over the line of scrimmage. Yeah, maybe too many men on the line, possibly. I don't know. I didn't see much in terms of movement. That penalty will move it back to the 39, or about the 38, excuse me. It'll be fourth down and long. Let's see if they open up the gun and let Goon give it a toss out here. Fourth down and six. Two receivers to each side. They're showing blitz. They hand off up the middle. And getting hit at the line of scrimmage, losing a yard back to the 40, and it will turn it over on downs. So the Flyers run about, what, Mike, about three minutes off the clock yeah. on that drive? Yep, with, with the clock continually running, this is the only time the clock's going to stop. Once they've set that ball and snapped the ball, 
And the clock will not stop unless there's a turnover. Ashland gets a ball at their own 39. So again, the Flyers are going to win this one. Pretty good uh, look by the Clive Flyers here tonight at the losing last week. Bellevue 21 to six in the fourth quarter. Clyde, of course, we gave you the score. Sandusky 28 to six over Lorraine. Port Clinton 27 to 14 in the third against Rossford. Janot up 14 to nothing. Ross still up. No updated scores there. And there's a pass across the middle, incomplete. Here in 17 to nothing over Norwalk, Columbia, and all over at Southview. They quit reporting that one. Columbia over Vermilion, 44 to nothing. Margareta getting throttled, 28 to 3. St. Paul by um, 9 over St. Joe hmm. going in the fourth quarter. And those are our scores here so far tonight. And this one's going to come to a slow grind here. Incomplete pass. Here comes a man in motion. McFrederick is going to hand off. Oh, boy, getting hit at the line of scrimmage, getting drilled back. Nice defensive play by the Clyde Up man. That was, um, who what, was that Daniels on defense? No, no. No, that was number. Um, number 57 made that 57. hit. 57, okay, thanks. That was Austin Carter came up and made that right. stop. Austin Carter with the hit. 42 seconds. And it's probably just a matter of one play. Third down and 10. Here come men in motion, multiple men in motion. They need to Somebody's get Somebody's got to get stuck. Yeah, they got to get stuck there. This guy's still moving over here, and now he's moving up. McFrederick's looking for a handoff. No, it's going to be quarterback keeper off to the left side, and he's going to run it out of bounds before he got met by a host of Clyde defenders. And that'll be it. At 13 seconds to go. And that should be the end of the ball game. So the Flyers, with an impressive first quarter of action, end up winning here tonight, 34 to nothing over Ashland. This ball game's over, but not our post game. The Frozone post game show comes up after this. Thanks for staying tuned with us here tonight. You listen to this victory by Clyde on 92 on the Wolf, part of the BAS Sports Network. Stay tuned right after this. Crown Battery, locally owned and operated, is pleased to support tonight's teams and takes this time to wish them luck for a successful season. The staff at Crown Battery recognizes the importance of teamwork both in and out of the classroom. That is why everyone at Crown Battery is a proud sponsor of not only tonight's broadcast, but a proud sponsor and contributor to our community, its athletic programs, and its educational infrastructure. Good luck and thank you from all the staff at Crown Battery, supplying new power since 19. 19- 26. PT Services, your premier hometown therapy provider, is now open at 1800 West State Street in Fremont, Ohio. Their clinic offers physical, occupational, and speech therapies, along with specialized wellness programs that focus on the health and well-being of our community. They work hard to offer individualized care that helps you achieve your rehabilitation and wellness goals. Ask your doctor to send you to PT Services Rehabilitation, providing individualized care to give you excellence in motion. For more information, visit them at ptsrehab.com. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, welcome into our Frozone postgame show. A 34 to nothing, Clyde with the win. And they even the record at one and one. So, Mike, your overall thoughts, first of all, of the performance here tonight by the Clyde Flyers. Yeah, they started out, you know, the gangbusters right in that first quarter, putting 27 up. And, you know, helped out quite a bit by Ashlyn. Ashlyn shot themselves in the foot a lot and, you know, gave Clyde that big edge. Ashland kind of tightened up there in the second quarter. No scoring was done. But at that point in time, Ashland had only one first down in the first half. They were able to put a little bit of a drive together starting the second half and uh, got a couple first downs but uh, was never really able to get anything going on offense. Clyde was able to shut them down. And Clyde's running game as well as their long passing game, I think, was the key to this game tonight. Let's see if Brad Bannister's down on the field. Brad, you're going to try and get an interview if you can? Yes, I will. I'll try to get an interview as long as I can stay in contact with you guys. All right. Well, we'll keep keep you tethered here, and, and hopefully we can get that done. And we want to kind of get that conversation if, if allowable. So the Flyers come out and have a 
about as good a first quarter of football as I've seen anybody have in quite a long time. Then they score one more time here in the second half, Mike, the first drive of the second half, and they go up, and once the running clock, ha clock happened, everything just kind of slid on the way through the end of the ball game. Yeah, and it makes it nice when, you know, you're up by over 30 and the clock's running. You can get your younger kids in and see what they're doing. And Ashland never did the whole time take any of their starters out on defense. So they had a couple that they shifted in and out, but the majority was still against that number one defense from Ashland. So those younger guys, they, they look pretty good against uh, it's a bigger Ashland uh, defensive front. Well, the Flyers scored quick in the first half. Of course, when we come back, I'll give you all the scoring. But they scored quick and, and often. And uh, they were ready to play tonight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They, they came out after, you know, the tough one last week, being up 14. And then, you know, St. Francis coming back and, and uh, going up by seven to win the game. You know, so they, they had something to prove tonight. And they, they did prove that... Uh, Hey, they're, they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. Well, when you get the stats, you'll find out it's Clyde's running game that really was the difference tonight. Their passing game, still a little bit of a work in progress. It is, but but they have the deep threat. And any time that you have the deep threat like that, those, that, any team you play, that secondary has to honor that. Sure. So you've got to keep people back so they're not coming up and stuffing up on that run. Now, mm -hmm. what Ashland did a little bit was bring their linebackers up to try to take Daniels away, which they were semi-effective doing that. But uh, that opened some other things up. So, you know, that's uh, th that's the beast. When you try to take one thing away, you're going to open something else up. All right, so Coach Carter done with his kids. He's going to come right over to our sideline reporter, Brad Bannister, and uh, we'll get a few comments from Coach Carter. Let's go down to Brad. He's getting a little celebratory uh, hug from his daughter here. All right. Coach Carter, you ready? You ready? All right. Coach Carter, first off, congrats. Uh, you know, what? Uh, I don't know what you did this week, but uh, you got him ready to come out and play some offense uh, starting right away. Well, you know, Brad, we talked. I mean, our word for the, the block word this week was, you know, respond and, and it was a tough one last week. and I'm not going to kid you. It took a while for me to get that one out of my system. Um, all the way probably up till kickoff tonight. Um, we just, uh, we did some things out of character last week and, and cost ourselves. So we talked about preparing and what was our resilience going to be and what was our response going to be. And I thought our response was pretty good out of the gate tonight. Yeah, Ashland did a nice job in the second quarter. I know you helped them out a little bit. Was there, is there something they were doing to kind of change things up just a little bit after your fast start? No, honestly, I think we just shot ourselves in the foot on a couple of those drives. We moved the ball. I thought we were effective moving the ball. We were just, it was the same thing last week. We'd have a penalty here, a bad play here, put you behind the sticks and it makes it tough. So uh, I thought, I mean, listen, Five wide in that quarterback to run, have him running around and our defense pitch a shutout tonight is huge. Uh, that's what I was going to say. You, you have to be proud of your defense and the way they played tonight. There was a time in the first half, I think, the whole first half, they had one, one first, first down. down. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, I, you know, our defense is very good. I thought they played very good last week. I thought we just got a little wore down. Tonight we came out with some fire, and uh, we held it through the whole four quarters. Yep, you can see it, Coach. Well, anyway, best of luck to you Thanks, next Brad. week and awesome game tonight. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. All right, that's Coach Carter as they win here big tonight. We'll take a timeout and continue on our post-game show, our Frozone post-game show, after this on 92-1, The Wolf. Hi, I'm Nick Cray, CEO of Fremont Federal Credit Union. We are proud to sponsor high school sports on Eagle 99, 92-1, The Wolf, and 100.9, Coast Country. Stop into any of our convenient locations to check out the credit union difference. We offer checking account options with lots of perks, all with a free debit card, free online banking, and mobile access with the convenience of nationwide shared branching. Investing in our communities and our youth are what we're all about. Visit us today at FremontFCU.com. Membership eligibility required, federally insured by NCUA. ACJ over at Door of Fremont are your installation and service experts, specializing in both residential and commercial garage doors and operators. Don't risk trying to do the repairs yourself, especially when it comes to broken springs. Let the professionals at ACJ take care of that for you. If you're looking to upgrade your garage door, ACJ offers a full line of doors from economy to premium to fit any budget with free estimates on installation. ACJ over at Door, serving Sandusky and surrounding counties. For more information, call 419-341-6586 or online at ACJ over at door.com. 
Looking for insurance but have a language barrier? See Welty Insurance Group for a comprehensive quote that you can understand. Welty agents will take the time to explain policies and benefits to you, even in Spanish or sign language. Our family protecting yours. Call Welty Insurance Group for insurance quotes you can trust at 419-334-4477. Welty Insurance Group, representing Erie Insurance in Sandusky, Fremont, Tiffin, Faustoria, and Cary, and at WeltyInsurance.com. Get in the game at Fremont Athletic Supply in downtown Fremont. Joining me now, John Cahill, head boys basketball coach for Fremont Ross. So, John, what do you love about coaching sports? Relationships you build with the kids and the other coaches, having those lifelong relationships. And I know you coach a lot of youth sports. So what's the benefit of that? If we're going to be good at Fremont Ross, we need an army of young kids coming that like basketball. And so we're working hard with those young ones, and I think you can have a big impact on them, too, emphasizing being a good student, being a good citizen. Get in the game at Fremont Athletic Supply in downtown Fremont. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. All right, welcome back. Here's the scoring in the contest. Clyde got the ball to start the game, and they went 81 yards, and 62 of them were on a pass from Cook to Cobble. But it was Daniels with a one-yard run. Extra point was good. The 948 mark, 7 to nothing. Clyde. First play of the game for Ashland. They fumbled it. Clyde recovered at the 18. They went three plays. So a span of about 30 seconds. Daniels went in from five yards for a second. Clyde's second score up 14 to nothing. Ashland punted. Clyde got the ball back after a poor punt. Got the ball on the 35-yard line. They went four plays. Six-yard drive by Bulger in the run. 21 to nothing. Clyde at the 618 mark of the first quarter. Ashland punted again. Clyde got the ball first play. Brady Wilson, 4.02 in the quarter, 46-yard touchdown pass. The extra point was not good. Hit the bar and was not good, 27 to nothing. That was our halftime score. Then in the second half, the only score we had was Clyde got the ball. After Ashton got the kickoff, they went three plays and fumbled. Clyde got in the 42, their own 42, and uh, they went, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 plays. Bolger had a one-yard touchdown run. Extra point was good, and that was the scoring for the night. We'll take our final time out. We'll get Brad and Mike into the broadcast to finish things off and we'll wrap things up here from Bishop Stadium. Again, Clyde wins big. 34 to nothing. We'll be back after this on the BAS Sports Network. Tonight's postgame show is brought to you by Frozone Frozen Yogurt. Tiffin's spot for premium frozen yogurt. We'll head back to the stadium after this on the BAS Sports Radio Network. Are you craving something sweet? Maybe salty? Check out Frozone in downtown Tiffin. It's a fun spot to meet up with family and friends. At Frozone, you can create your own masterpiece with 12 different flavors of frozen yogurts and more than 30 yummy toppings. Finish your creation off with hot fudge, caramel, or peanut butter sauce. And then dig in with our magical spoons. Frozone Frozen Yogurt, located at 114 South Washington Street in Tiffin. Open seven days a week. Make sure to like and follow Frozone Tiffin on Facebook and Instagram. Get in the game at Fremont Athletic Supply in downtown Fremont. All right, what's your name? Mackenzie Vela. And what is your favorite sport? Volleyball. And why volleyball? Because I like to serve and hit the ball. Now, do you like playing basketball because of your dad? Uh, I like it. Did your dad ever coach you? Yes. And what do you like or dislike about him coaching you? Uh, he yells at me. Get in the game at Fremont Athletic Supply in downtown Fremont. Hi, I'm Nick Cray, CEO of Fremont Federal Credit Union. We're proud to sponsor high school sports on Eagle 99, 92-1 The Wolf, and 100.9 Coast Country. Investing in our communities and our youth are what we're all about. Stop into any of our convenient offices or visit us online at FremontFCU.com to check out the credit union difference. We offer local decision-making on loans, making the process fast and easy for our members. Visit us today at FremontFCU.com. Membership eligibility required, federally insured by NCUA. PT Services, your premier hometown therapy provider, is now open at 1800 West State Street in Fremont, Ohio, offering physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech pathology, and wellness programs that focus on the health and well-being of our community. Their staff is dedicated to providing expert care as they help you achieve your goals. Ask your doctor to send you to PT Services Rehabilitation, providing individualized care to give you excellence in motion. For more information, visit them at ptsrehab.com. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. 
We're in the Frozone post game show. We're about ready to wrap it up and land this plane here tonight in Clyde. The beautiful new facility, new field for the Flyers, and their home opener was nothing but spectacular. They did a great job tonight. They win big 34 to nothing. So I'm going to bring my two uh, colleagues in here just to remind you all that Clyde goes to 1-1, one and one, Ashland falls to 0-2. Ashland's at home against Teves Valley, and they're a Division II squad. And Clyde is taking on Norway to, uh, next week. We won't have that game. We will have the Shelby at Bellevue game. So we're expecting a good one there over at the Bellevue Athletic Complex. So Mike Martin, first of all, boy, this game came out as a sprint and turned into a slow, methodical football game. But uh, Clyde on the upside of that uh, encounter. Yeah, like Coach Carter said, you know, they came out strong and, they were able to put a lot of points on the board in that first quarter, and then they kind of stalled a little bit, you know, shot themselves in the foot. Ashland, they weren't going to go away. You know, they, they hung in there, and and when it got to the second half of the game, Clyde was able to put one more score on the board and still throttled Ashland, not allowing them to, you know, get their offense going at all, whether it was a pass game or whether it was a run game. So, you know, this is a big win for Clyde, and... You know, not knowing a whole lot about their opponent next week, um, I'm sure Coach Carter's going to, you know, be digging into that and figuring out what they're going to have to do to uh, get that second win of the season. And Brad Bannister on the sideline, you watched it all unfold. Anything that you could say really stood out for you tonight? You know, kind of what I saw was a team that's not used to losing. You know, they got beaten week one, and Cl Clyde doesn't lose a whole lot. And when they do, you know, it, it seems to be a close, hard-fought game. And Coach Carter had them dialed in, I think, all week in practice. I think he had their attention. And it showed tonight because they came out in both phases, or all three phases of the game, if you want to be honest, whether it be special teams, offense, defense, and, and they were clicking. I do think they got in that little bit of lull, which teams can do when they get up huge. And it kind of became that stale. Maybe you could even see in the second half, they hit that score right away. They calmed it down, game over. You know, I think the one thing I'll take away from this is, even though Clyde went up big and things kind of they didn't go sideways. They just kept going north and south for them offensively. Their defense was outstanding. And against a running quarterback that they were really concerned about, uh, he's going to go home pretty frustrated because Clyde really played, I thought, disciplined defense tonight. Uh, they had a tough loss up in Toledo. You can tell that they came pretty ready in this ball game. but I thought their assignment football was very good, and they end up winning this one. So thanks, guys. Of course, we'll be on the road to Bellevue next week and get one. to see our friends over there and see Shelby and Bellevue. This game is brought to you by Fremont Federal Credit Union, UIS Insurance and Investments, Frozone, also Holer Sheet Metal, Fremont Athletic Supply, Frickers, Weldy Insurance Group, Fremont Floor Covering, Wendy's, Ice Centers of Northwest Ohio, Sunrise Cooperative, Friendship Stores, Crown Battery, Hanneman, Chanitsky, Keller Funeral Home, Miller Super Value, ACJ, Overhead Doors and Grunt Drug, along with PT Services and Rehabilitation. So we'll see you next week from Bellevue, but we want to remind you this game obviously brought to you by Fremont Federal Credit Union. We had Mike Martin with us in the color commentary down on the field. Brad Bannister bringing all the sideline reports. And our chief engineer producer tonight, April Gottron. Thanks so much for joining the crew, April. We'll talk to you soon. And for everybody else, have a great night. We'll see you next week in Bellevue again the final Clyde 34 Ashland nothing good night and God bless tonight's post game show is brought to you by Frozone frozen yogurt Tiffin spot for premium frozen yogurt we'll head back to the stadium after this on the BAS sports radio network are you craving something sweet? Maybe salty? Check out Frozone in downtown Tiffin. It's a fun spot to meet up with family and friends. At Frozone, you can create your own masterpiece with 12 different flavors of frozen yogurts and more than 30 yummy toppings. Finish your creation off with hot fudge, caramel, or peanut butter sauce. And then dig in with our magical spoons. Frozone Frozen Yogurt, located at 114 South Washington Street in Tiffin. Open seven days a week. Make sure to like and follow Frozone Tiffin on Facebook and Instagram. Taking care of each other is what community is all about. That's a priority at Hanneman Chudzinski Keller Funeral Home. For over a century, they've proudly served the Fremont community and surrounding area with personal, compassionate care. They're dedicated to helping families create personalized, meaningful final tributes to honor your loved one's life. For information, call or visit HanemanFH.com. 
Hanneman Chudzinski Keller Funeral Home. They've expanded their family to better serve yours. Wendy's Made to Crave menu is new and delicious. Introducing the Bourbon Bacon Cheeseburger. Our bourbon sauce is a sweet topping on an always fresh, never frozen single, double, or triple. Looking for something spicy? Try the Jalapeno Popper Sandwich. A spicy chicken topped with jalapeno cream cheese, cheddar cheese, pepper jack cheese, and jalapeno. Still hungry? Fill up on a pretzel pub sandwich, creamy pub cheese, and bacon on a soft pretzel bun. This summer, the place to stop is Wendy's. You know when it's real. Crown Battery, locally owned and operated, is pleased to support tonight's teams and takes this time to wish them luck for a successful season. The staff at Crown Battery recognizes the importance of teamwork both in and out of the classroom. That is why everyone at Crown Battery is a proud sponsor of not only tonight's broadcast, but a proud sponsor and contributor to our community, its athletic programs, and its educational infrastructure. Good luck and thank you from all the staff at Crown Battery, supplying new power since 1926. Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Football. 92-1 the Wolf. 92-1 the Wolf. W-O-H-F. Thank you for listening to Fremont Federal Credit Union High School Sports Coverage on 92-1 the Wolf. Visit our website at wohfradio.com for the dates and times of our upcoming broadcasts on 92-1 the Wolf. This has been a presentation of the BAS Sports Network.